We're always in our clubhouse getting high. Super fuckers! Everybody wishes we would die. Super fuckers! It's the Pizza Party Podcast, and hopefully things fucking work this time. I'm Pam Pizza. Who are you, people? Episode 69 is dead. It's not coming. It, Fuck all of it's, you. It's 69. It's 70. We, 70. 69 is cursed. We're like an elevator. You know, like when you go on an elevator and you see there's no floor 13. It only goes from 12 to and 14. This is it. This is Podcast 70. Monster Trucks, that one, that was 69. But this one, it's 70. So it's fine. We're, we're not cursed in this episode. Okay? Wouldn't Monster Trucks and, be 68? I don't know. No one no, cares. No, no, no. Who cares? But ha- we, we've already recapped this like three times. But who are you people? Who are you? <laughs> I'm Nolan. I'm Izzy. So I'm dead. Um, Gary. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm Nick, and I think Resident Evil 7 is the best thing to happen to gaming since No Man's Sky. Oh. Wow. You, just, you just like run in here with the opinion. You didn't even let us like wow. have like, me- like, like, <laughs> like mingle a little that's bit. That's pretty much like... opinion. You just... That's pretty, that's going against <laughs> There. You just come in here and you just spout this horrific opinion, just like what the fuck? Who the hell are you? I thought that's what we were Takes doing. No fucking names, just like Nick, Nick has guns found a way. Him. Nick has found a way to explain everything about himself in like under five seconds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who's who are you, Gary? We've had you on. Who are you? Uh, yeah, this is like my fourth or fifth time on. I think Gary won't leave. Yeah, I'm I'm here till the end. Mm-hmm. Um, I my name is Gary. Uh. I'm doing a show with Nick called Failing Upward. Uh, yeah. Do some other stuff too. Do Trump, Trump Animation, which is a film festival. Uh, hopefully doing it again this year. And then I am doing some other projects as well. And who's your friend, Gary? Gare Bear? Uh, let him introduce himself, Nick. I, I'm Nick, and I like Resident Evil 7. <laughs> Contrarian, they call me. I... I'm Nick. Uh, I'm Almut County, um, and I have things I want to do from cartoons to comics to games. Mm-hmm. And what's your I'm relation with um, stuff. with a uh, Gary? Yeah, yeah, and uh, animated uh, f- uh, the pilot for Failing Upward. Izzy, weren't you supposed to animate Failing Upward? Yeah, he took my sloppy seconds. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> no, no, uh, <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I'm Whoa. sorry. No, uh, I, I originally was working with Gary on um, Failing Upwards. I did some of the initial or second round of the second generation of designs for the characters. Mm-hmm. And then um, I had to like remove myself from the project due to being too busy and financial stuff. So uh, Gary found this person yeah. and now he's yeah. working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nick originally and he came did it really good job from what I saw. Yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. Looks really cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Nick came on as a uh in a storyboard artist uh like 2012, I think. And Damn, he really <laughs> did a really cool animatic. And after Izzy left, I was like, Hey, do you want to animate this thing? And Nick was like, sure. And then two years later we had our pilot. <laughs> and why are why are you here, Gary? Uh, I'm here today because we're actually launching an Indiegogo for Failing Upward. Um, we're trying to do half of season one, uh, which is about five more episodes. Uh, so that's six episodes in total. Uh, there's another six for the rest of season one, but you know, we'll get to that. We just kind of want to, uh, do this Indiegogo to, I mean, obviously do the show, but as well as kind of like get people accustomed to how the show will flow and the characters and everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if it goes well and people like it, we'll try to do more. So, like, what what is the average Whoa. episode length of uh, Failing Upwards episode? The ones after the pilot are probably going to be about three minutes each. Um, and the show itself is basically about these two characters, Cody and JC. Cody is kind of like this nerdy slacker, and JC is this really kind of diligent, cynical type of girl. Uh, after one night of meeting uh, and parting ways, they kind of uh, start this long distance relationship. Uh, friendship, not actual relationship, and they kind of rely on each other to get uh, through their day and everything like that. And it's just a slice of life type of show. Um, if you like stuff like Scott Pilgrim or Daria, or kind of like a lot of a lot of '90s stuff, I guess you would probably really dig it. Um, yeah, yeah. Links to below to Gary's uh, Indiegogo and th- I guess whatever footage there is of uh, of failing upwards. Yeah, there's. Yes. Yeah, there's a pilot you could watch. Like I mentioned, the pilot Nick animated. You can check that out. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's it's really cool. I've been doing this for a while now, and all the people I've gotten to work with are super cool. And the 
the new team that we'll be getting if the Indiegogo goes through is really cool. And a lot of really talented animators, uh, uh, Jaime R, who did a prank time, if you've seen that video. Mm-hmm. Um, there's uh, Jack Bodler, who's really cool. He's like an up and coming animator out of the UK. Uh, Natalie Butler, who does a comic called Too Much Caffeine. And then uh, uh, Wes, uh, who people might know as Scrib, who's done uh, animation for Steven Suptic and uh, Vine Sauce. So all really cool people. Yeah. But uh, hey, is that all? anything else about uh, growing around? I mean, <laughs> falling down? I mean, <laughs> growing around? Don't say that. Please, God, don't <laughs> say that. <laughs> crap. What was it? Crap. Uh, fall, failing down. Failing, failing upward. upward. Yes. Failing that upward. The original yeah. name. The uh, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> My mind went to that movie falling down. <laughs> Do you have anything to add, Nick? Uh, yes, railing upward coming 2018. <laughs> oh, that, that's the uh, porn version. Oh, yeah. man. Can't wait for that. Oh, yeah. oh I just... Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I just... Yeah. What I just wanted to thank Nikki Hutzman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but uh, what happened to uh, Jim? Um, um, he is... He has cancer. No, don't don't joke like that. He has cancer, way, everybody. I'm sorry. Don't joke like that. We they're gonna believe it. The fans are gonna believe anything we say. So don't. He's dead. Oh, he's oh. literally dead. Oh, I like whenever man. Jim is missing. It's always Nolan's job to let us know. As if Jim, Nolan is a uh, Jim's keeper. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Speaking of yeah. this, this reminds me in high school. Like that, you can't. You can't just. Uh, you can't just dox us like that. I'm not doxing you. I'm just saying. I just noticed a trend. Speaking of uh, being someone's keeper, like I remember in high school, I had to read this book called uh, My Sister's Keeper. And I always thought that sounded like some sort of incest bondage porno or something. All right. Disappointingly, it was not, though, sadly. Ah. Although you, you want to know what, what that movie, that book's about. Uh, Well, there was a movie about it. We, I don't know. Anyway, so this movie is about uh, uh, two sisters, like one's older and one's younger. And the older one gets sick. And she needs an or- a new organ, like a kidney or something, to live. And, like, the younger sister's like, well, I have one, but I don't want to give it, you know? I don't have to do that. And they-, they have a big court case over, like, how she shouldn't have to do it and stuff. And that's the whole plot of the movie. So, spoiler, by the end, the court decides that she doesn't need to give away her kidney. And she's, like, celebrating and they're driving home. Like, yeah, and then a car comes and crashes into her and she dies. But they extract her kidney and give it to the older sister. So, <laughs> that court case was fucking worthless. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, I mean, like, I remember Danny Phantom has an episode of the same title. And that's not the plot. Oh, <laughs> what was it called? Sadly, the movie did not have that ending. Bullshit. <clears throat> How did the movie end? Uh, it, it ended on the, the just the girl dying, the the, the older sister dying w- without the kidney transplant, and they play that at her funeral. They play that a uh, bagpipe song from Star Trek Two: Return of Spock or whatever. <laughs> Whatever second Star Trek movie it was. You mean the Wrath of Khan? Sounds like a terrible franchise. (laughs) Wrath of Khan, yeah, that's what it was. I I didn't know these things. And then the the one after that is Search for Spock. Don't ask me. I don't even watch Star Trek, but somehow I know those two movies. I I watch Star Wars. I don't watch Star Trek. But yeah, they play that they play that uh (laughs) bagpipe song at her funeral, all because she didn't she couldn't get a kidney from her own sister. I wonder if Emily would give me one of her kidneys if I ever needed it. No, I wouldn't, Pan. Fuck off. Who the fuck uh. are you? That's not me. That's a fucking liar. Though I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it either, Pan. You're fucked. Fuck you, Pan. What would the What would the porno name for my sister's keeper be? It would just be called my sister's keeper. That's all you need. My yeah, sister's it kind of works. My sister's peeper. Oh no, that works. Jeepers peepers. Oh. It's, it was. It was. Um. It was shut down for being very transphobic, though. So. I don't get it. We are staying on this joke. Hey, so the next video is going to be a review on Dougal, if anyone remembers that movie. What the fuck is that? Um, That's awful. Okay, well, to sum it up, basically, uh, this was a a European CG animated film they brought over to America. Like, it was already with British English language, but they got rid of all the... All, all the audio and replace it with like celebrity voices like um Kevin Smith. W- yeah, Kevin Smith, Whoopi Goldberg, uh Jimmy Fallon, John Stewart. <laughs> Is that really the story behind it? Is that why it seems so fucking bizarre? Yes, it's a fucking beautiful mess of a film. Like I don't oh know, I, I I I saw it yesterday for the first time and I just had to like take a walk just like 
that got through. This this was put in theaters and advertised with celebrity voices because it's such a bafflingly broken movie. That's what uh, that's what Miramax would do though. Miramax <laughs> has a couple of those. I think that's Miramax if I'm not mistaken, like the wine stink company. company or something like that. Yeah, okay. That's yeah, and that's why Kevin Smith is in it too. <laughs> yeah, they did this. But, uh, yeah, they did this again for um recently with um underdogs was it a soccer movie yeah underdogs it's, yeah. By, it's okay. another weinstein company movie that they brought over but they said they advertised saying like hey come in this august and you never see it again they never show it in theaters it just goes straight to dvd for some reason the fuck like i guess that they, was like they're yeah they, they thought i guess they thought it was well i guess it would be i don't know just trick people into thinking it's a theatrical movie never release it and people We'll see it on like a on like Netflix or something and think, oh yeah, that was on theaters a couple of weeks back. I'll see this. Maybe that was their plan. I have a, I have a really em- embarrassing story about Dougal, actually. Uh oh, tell I was, us. Um, it must I must have been like probably like nine when it came out, and um, I remember the Pink Panther with uh, Steve Martin was in theaters at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I remember my grandpa. Uh, we were gonna go see a movie. I was like, hey, I kind of want to. I was a little nine year old. I was like, hey, I kind of want to see Dougal. So. We went and got tickets to see Dougal and then the guy at the front like ripped our tickets or whatever. So we went to go. We were like, we were going to go into Dougal and I was like, eh, you know, I don't I don't really know if I want to see this. And then uh, it was like, that's oh, OK. I think uh, there's like a showing for Pink Panther. It's like starting right now. So we went and saw that instead. And then I was like, I think a week later, I was like, I kind of want to see Dougal anyway. So we went and bought tickets for Dougal again. And when we went to get our tickets ripped, it was the same dude that ripped them the last time. Uh-huh. So he thought we paid to see Dougal twice and oh. he gave us this really <laughs> fucking weird look. It's like, don't judge me. I saw and that. That comes to mind whenever anybody brings up that movie. Just like you're discriminated when you went to see Dougal. <laughs> <laughs> you were shamed just for enjoying. You even laugh like Jim. You were shamed. He does. <laughs> he a little nine year old. That's Jim's left. But you all want to get into the news? Yeah. This is CNN. Dougal and uh, what was that other really crappy animated movie? Delgo? Delgo. Is that the other oh one? Oh my god, came- Delgo. Yeah. I used to get those confused. That's a, oh man, I but remember. They're when- two totally different movies. Delgo is a CG animated <laughs> film and I think it took nine years to make. I don't know, for funding problems, and eventually they released it, like, in 2010. No, wait, 2009. And it it was in theaters for, like, a week and gone. (laughs) Oh, God. Starring Chris Kattan and Freddie Prince Jr. And uh, Michael Clark Dunkin' Donuts, yeah. May he rest in peace. He did a lot of weird movies towards the end of his career. Like, a lot of weird, like, straight-to-DVD animated movies. Oh, Oh, did he? He did. What was the one with John Heater that was like a? Uh, it was like a Kung Fu Panda knockoff. Uh, I, I'm guessing like uh, I don't even know. There's a bunch of. Kung it was a Karate movie. Panda or something. Yeah. I don't know. It was really bad. But I just remember saying like, and starring Michael Clark Duncan. I'm like, mm-hmm. wasn't he nominated for an Oscar? <laughs> Why is he here? Like he needed to do something for his kid or something. You know. But Did he have kids? Did he have a who wife? Who knows? Look, I just assume if any actor makes a bad decision in a kid's movie, I assume they did it for his ki- for their kids. Unless it's John Heater, because he has Unless really bad taste in doing movies. Yeah, or you're um, uh, Rob Schneider and you need money to live. Those uh, real Rob. Those, was it real Rob? Is that the name of the show? No, yeah. <laughs> no one. Knows. Those checks aren't. Those checks aren't clearing. But uh, let's <laughs> the news. Um, not animation news, but um, IMDb is shutting down its forums. <laughs> sadly. Oh no! Good. <laughs> I mean, have you been to an IMDb forum? They're at the very bottom of the page, and they're always just full of idiots. You know. Yeah, I've, that was that was a lot of my high school days. Was hanging on IMDb and talking with people about like fully coolie and stuff like that oh, yeah. <laughs> what's funny is uh me and several other people would go on like the the forums for like the dark night in around 2009 and we were we, nobody would be talking about the dark night we'd all be just t- talking about off-topic things like uh anyone see the new james cameron's avatar heard it was overrated stuff like that and people <laughs> like occasionally came in saying what the fuck is this why is no one talking about the dark night <laughs> <laughs> like people just hijacked that thing for the longest time. Like I was they hijacked it like Bang 
hijack the plane in Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> yeah, well, although what's funny is that uh, the Dark Knight Rises wasn't even announced yet. Like, Inception was going on, but, like, we were all speculating, like, you know, guys, it's been three years. I don't think the dark, the third Dark Knight movie's coming out. It's never happening. Sorry, man. And then it did, and it was like, oh, that happened. <laughs> There was a, for a while, like, when a celebrity died on IMDb, like, it was after The Dark Knight, there would always be a thread, like, where that celebrity died, they would be like, Jack Nicholson warned them, or something like <laughs> oh that, God, and that you, was, like, a giant... You went on those forums, too? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, there was always this meme on this forum <laughs> where, where uh, yeah, where it always said, Jack Nicholson said he warned them. Like, God damn. <laughs> yeah, like all those classic people I'll miss, you know, like Joker's girlfriend and Va Sea of Vodka and whoever else was on that forum. Like, I remember there was a guy on those forums who really hated um, Greg Sipes, the guy who voiced Beast Boy. <laughs> I, I don't know if you remember. This. I think maybe that was me. No, it wasn't. Shut up. <laughs> I think it was because I was going, I was talking about Teen Titans and I would post about that a lot. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> I swear that could have been me. I no no it, I don't think it was you. I think cuz that guy had like a link to his YouTube channel or something and it was definitely not you. Oh damn. But I remember I did l promote my uh my uh videos on there. Well, I linked I, I didn't post on YouTube. I post on Blip, the mm. old user website, the video upload site and also my blog spot. And I don't know, occasionally I would always get the same comment saying, "How Dare you say the N word in your videos? <laughs> yeah, like I didn't do it. That person's trying to incriminate me, but yeah, it was simpler times. If anybody, if anybody said the N word in your videos, it was probably me. Yeah, I remember when that I happened. Remember the first time that happened it was uh, the DashCon episode. Yeah, look, it was a simpler time. Like people, this, was in it. More, more people. Could, it, was it was more acceptable to say that back then, you know, when Nolan was on, you know. It was a simpler time. I'm still on. I'm sitting here right now. Yeah. <laughs> but rip in peace, IMDb forums. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm kind of sad because, like, occasionally I would look up a terrible movie and I want to see what people are talking about. Like, occasionally you get, like, some 13-year-old saying some weird stuff. Like, if you remember in my Tony Hawk's Boom Boom Sabotage review, like, I showed an IMDb post <laughs> Uh, for for that movie from some 12 year old who's now in their 20s and it's like wow this kid's a dumbass i have a i have a theory though that why they're closing that i think a game i think theory. a game no i think during that whole like time in the summer where people were going like crazy about ghostbusters mm -hmm. like those forums would break all the time uh -oh. because there were so many people like the day that was released like posting like oh it's this on Rotten Tomatoes now it's this on Rotten Tomatoes like back and forth and back and forth and I remember during that time the forums were down like a lot Shit. and uh I not that at th that point I was still like posting on them but like I would go just to see what people were saying and it was it was pretty bad yeah. um and I, I just don't think they want oh god it was probably Sony paying for people to go on those forums and fuck it all up <laughs> Sony yeah. paid to sabotage their own movie <laughs> Yes, they were paying to get as much buzz about this thing as they could. <laughs> I can't believe Ghostbusters divided the nation. So sad. Ghostbusters. And now nobody cares. What if, what <laughs> if this know. was all a trap and this was a, like a tax write-off and they wanted Ghostbusters to fucking fail? It was it was uh, a it was a relaunch plan for the real girl Ghostbusters. Girl Busters. <laughs> well, isn't that what they, isn't that like just the plot of the producers where they just wanted to make a bomb so they could make the money back in like taxes or Basically, something? Like, no, yeah. don't be ridiculous. You never know. That would never happen. <laughs> ball, <laughs> ball busters. <laughs> Do you even understand that, that filmmaking is art, even if it's a complete and utter failure? Well, Sony Pictures, <laughs> at least in the end, they still have their integrity. <laughs> um, that's yeah, questionable. they're making the emoji movie, so that's a very, very. Uh, what's your guys' favorite? Saw... What's your guys' favorite emoji? Mine's uh, the 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 crying, laughing one. Classic. That's a good one. That that's the best one. Obviously, did they did they create that like really dumb punky girl emoji just for the movie? Yes. Yep. No, Gary, yeah. that's a real emoji. You <laughs> fucking idiot. That's me. That's that's I'm gonna be in the movie. Word. I'm I'm punky girl emoji. I listen to Avril Lavigne. 
I think I'm more upset by the fact that you guys are keeping up with the Emoji Movie. <laughs> Look, it's like an impending doom. I, I'm not keeping up with the Emoji Movie. Literally, um, Spo dragged me to see Thing, and it was like a, it was such a mediocre movie. And like the, they played the Emoji Movie trailer in front of it. And I'm like, God damn it! Yay! Wait, what movie did you go see? Sing. Sing. Sing, okay, sing. No, you know, no, because the 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 like edge lord emoji. It's it's not like an emoji. That's supposed to be like jailbreak. You know, when like you jailbreak your iPod or whatever. Uh, jailbait emoji. What? Yeah. <laughs> jailbait. Yeah, but when I was in the, I was watching the movie Sing, and they played the trailer to the emoji movie. I just heard a little girl in the audience saying, "No." <laughs> that's shocking because that's like. <laughs> She's pretty cool. <laughs> Why? <laughs> No, she said, why? <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Emily doesn't know how to shut up in the theater. Nick uh, <sighs> Nick insulted me once because we were talking about, um, I think this is right around the time the Lego movie had come out. And we both pretty much enjoyed that movie. Yeah. But the, the one thing, like, that's when they started, like, doing all the licensed movies and, like, announcing them. Mm-hmm. They announced the Minecraft movie. And the only reason I was vaguely interested in seeing the Minecraft movie is because Mac from It's Always Sunny is writing it. Like, that's the only reason. Oh, and it's like, how could you be so interested? I'm like, uh, not really, but it's, it's got somebody I like writing it. And then I, then oh, I figured oh. Was that, that uh, Gary is secretly game theory. It's my pleasure to announce our first movie. Yay. It's almost too thrilling for words. So bring the family. Doesn't have to be your family. The Emoji Movie. So do you think that, uh, like, do you think, like, the logo for Facebook and the logo for Instagram, like, paid money to make cameos like Bowser and Bison? Oh, oh yeah, sure. You, you know, like, like they're a character? Yeah. <laughs> and who would voice Facebook? And they're they're probably gonna make really funny self referential jokes. About maybe they'll it. have a yeah. scene where they go on the music illy app and meet all these uh famous music illy pl- stars as emojis. Yeah. Oh, they they can make like internet references where like, no girl, I like and subscribe you. <laughs> oh, what if there's a wrong joke in it? Okay, uh, here's here's the real question. What, that'd be so timely. What uh modern I guess like. Uh, hip hop pop star, do you think is gonna make like a, a cameo in Emoji Movie and do a part of the soundtrack? Hmm. Aaron Carter. <laughs> <laughs> well, this isn't 2003 anymore. <laughs> no, no, because uh, at the last uh, YouTube VidCon party, we had a surprise singer, Aaron fucking Carter. What? So who knows? It's a possibility. He's not. He he did not grow up to be an attractive man. Oh, didn't he like? I'm um, sorry. Like trying to get hook up with uh, Hillary Duff, even though she's married. I, I think so. <laughs> wow, or he's like, Carter. well, he's Merry like- Christmas, Lizzie McGuire. Like, uh, apparently, like Beyonce has, is having twins or some shit, and I'm like, I don't know why everyone cares about these celebrities because no one has anything better to do. Yeah, but it's just I don't know. It's just like uh, people are going wild, like telling each other, and I'm just like, it's their personal lives. It doesn't matter. Because- like, it literally does not affect you. No one has anything better to do. It's gossip. People, people gave up their dreams and hobbies at a very young age to work nine to five. That's it. That's the answer. But uh, going on to the other news, game theory. One of you had something to say about game theory? Tell us, Izzy. Oh, okay. So apparently the most recent game theory, because we're saying it weird for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently Matt Pat made like this four minute long, like dramatic music, slow, just like, I'm scared to talk about Undertale. Undertale it's frightening. You guys have backlashed at me making terrible theories about how Ness is sans. I don't believe it. No one believes it, but I'm wasting your time making a video about it. Why would you hate me for that? And I gave Pope Undertale. It's I gave it to him as a symbolic gesture. I mean, other people gave him worse gifts like <laughs> surfboards and a book about themselves. I gave them something that was meaningful. Like it, it's just, it's just like it, it, it's almost as bad. Like it, it is like so close to being like that. Leave Brittany alone. <laughs> 
internet, welcome to Game Theory. Before we begin today's episode, I need to take a moment to level with you all, because it's time I pull back the curtain of the show a bit and address a couple things. Now don't get me wrong, I love this game. I really do, but doing episodes on Undertale have been some of the worst experiences that I've had in the six years of doing this show. The first was Sansa's Nest, a theory I was so excited to share with you. In fact, it was one of, if not my favorite episode that we had done of Game Theory to date, and it was a fun episode. Now don't get me wrong, did I in any way think that this was canon lore to the series? No. Of course not, I didn't think that Sans is actually Ness, but at the end of the day, these are theories meant to get you to think about things from a different perspective. And let's be honest here, there are a lot of similarities between Earthbound and Undertale, okay? But the overwhelming negativity and ridicule that that video got was just... was just crushing. This song is called I Am Sad, So Very, Very Sad. Thank you. No, I, I'll tell you what it sounds closer to. It sounds like closer to when Linkara freaked out about like people complaining about his videos not being on time or something like that. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Remember when uh, Rocco Boat from um, uh, Mega64 was like made fun of him for it? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's it called? Volt Avengers <laughs> is going to be out when it's out. I had to go drive to Nana's hospital, and it was 30 minutes away. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let me... see Igbath and Mirror wash hands twice again, he tells me. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a great video. <laughs> Let's, okay, let me explain. I guess we'll explain that, because um, <laughs> basically, Link Car has all these retrospects on Power Rangers, but, like, um, Mega64 made this one video parrying him, <laughs> and what whatever happened in it, uh, Nolan? Um, um but, No, basically, um, Link Car made videos complaining that the schedule for Volta, um, for Power Rangers was uh, very time consuming and he didn't have time to make them and he was getting really upset, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so Rocco from Mega64 just made a video calling him, calling him out on his bullshit <laughs> and make, was making fun of him. And the best part is if you scroll down in the comments on the history of Voltage Avengers, don't ask when it's coming out. Um, Larry, um, Guru Larry. <laughs> made it was in every comment section better. ever. Yeah. Huh? Guru, it really is. Yeah, Guru no, no, Larry's let, everywhere in all the comments. Let let let, uh, let no one finish the thing about Likara because I do want to talk about that. Go ahead. No, but he was like, but Guru Larry was like, you better not disable the ads on this video. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny. Okay, so so uh, this Guru Larry guy, like I I just know him as like I guess he did like reviews or something on that guy with the glasses at some point or something. Screw attack. He did um yeah screw attack. He was he used to do games yanks can't wank or something was the name okay. of his show. Yeah, but but like he is in like so many comment sessions. Like it like he lives on YouTube because I occasionally <laughs> check up on like Chris Chan just to see what's going on. And like Chris Chan made like his video about like um when Donald Trump became president, he made like this thing where it's like there is no president anymore. And he has like a transformer destroying a Trump like thing, and like there's you know you scroll in the comment section and there's fucking Guru Larry on every single Christian video. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, I mean, <laughs> I don't know since I mean we all watch a bunch of videos, but I'm always I don't know for some reason I never have the urge to like comment on everyone, but I should do that like Gary, I mean like um Guru Larry does. <laughs> I do it too. It's just okay. Mark my mark my flag on these videos just, just so Larry I can hear like, like oh, it's what's the guy's name? Guru Larry. Guru Larry. Yeah, he does a lot of uh, video game videos and knows a bunch. Larry. It's a, it's a bit too close, I think. He, and he has such a thick accent, like it drives yeah. me crazy. Oh, I love his accent. No, it's, it's great. It's not thick. Oh, it's my Guru Larry. <laughs> Guru Larry. How dare you? I really do like his. I want to get that across. Of all the people we're talking about, I actually do enjoy his videos. Yeah. I've spoken no, I do him. Too. Ew, it's just like I cannot stand his accent because I'm a fucking xenophobic piece of shit. <laughs> wow, rude. Literally, literally, this is the most asshole-ish thing about me is that like if, if I can barely understand you, no matter whether it's like a speech impediment or accent, it really drives me crazy because it's like, I don't know what you're saying. Fucking rude. I know it's rude, but I can't help it. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, I've Skyped with Guru Larry once. Is he a cool guy? Oh, yeah. I've followed him since, like, the beginning of YouTube, uh, of Screw, Screw Attack. Attack and stuff, like, 2006. Like, I've followed all these people. Were you on the, the G4? For, not G4. Is it, what were they called? G1s. 
G1 forum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That like, was those were some times. Okay, a long time. Although uh, Guru Larry hates Screw Attack now, but anyway, they fucked him over. I, I met um, what's his name, Stuttering Craig once, and he was really nice. I don't know about how he deals with people business wise, but he was pretty cool, like just in a fan environment. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like it's always I, I I like Stuttering Craig, but I don't know. He so, always seems shady to me business wise. Because um, I don't know. Every there's always some controversy. Like a uh, handsome Tom gets rejected out of the group and stuff. I remember that was like a big deal. Yeah. Like, I don't know why. Go looking back, it's so stupid to like be involved with that. But I remember that happened. I was like really upset. Yeah, but like I, a long time ago, I used to go on the internet forums for a screw attack, and I w- I'd always pride myself in like having the most, like being the most posted. Like I post the most in forums ever like i was getting my rank up there i was like in the top 100 and eventually they had to do like a server switch and everyone got to reset to zero and i was like no my claim to fame is gone no <laughs> i remember my question got featured on side scrollers and i freaked out i was like oh my god they noticed me <laughs> the 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 forum thing i used back in the day like a decade ago i used to be really big on forums like spriter's resource and such mm. and post count was important to me too yeah like, like, like I didn't, I didn't like spam to get it up just high, but I was like, I, I forced myself to comment as much as I could because I want because because you you leveled up. There's a point in the sparse resource where like uh, your avatar, your name, the group that you're part of would like change after so much because mm-hmm. you had experience points and it felt like a game. So it was to encourage um, actual like activity. Yeah, <laughs> then you, I realized, you... wow, I was a fucking loser to do that. What do about? You guys remember, why is there not um, a... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, I was gonna say was why is there not a rebel taxi uh, forum or is there? Uh, nope. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't want to monitor a forum. That sounds like a lot of work. You know, you had a higher. No, you don't need a forum anymore. The Reddit's are fine. Yeah, Reddit or yeah. just like the YouTube comments in general. Just, you know. Well, like, well, so much of Rebel Taxi is like dwelled in like nostalgia. Yeah. You know, like what's not what's more nostalgic than having a vision free forum? Mm. <laughs> okay, you got a good point there. Uh, but but we still have the Reddit, and you know that's that's something in the description. We have the Reddit, the fan. DeviantArt in the fan chunk playlist. So if you have any videos relating to Rebel Taxi or the podcast, uh, send them to me at rebeltaxi at yahoo.com and I'll put them in the uh, playlist for f- fan videos. Yeah. Do you guys remember um, tv.com? I had like forums too. I, I don't know if you ever went there. I remember when it was called tvtome.com. TV Tome, that's it. TV Tome. Yeah, that was the original name. And like, I remember I just searched up random, any sort of random cartoon, like let's say Sailor Moon. And they say, in this version of the of Sailor Moon, they cut out this and this. And I'm like, like there back then there were no YouTube videos to look it up for yourself. But so you just had to use your imagination on what they're describing. It's like, I want to know what these are. But alas, I don't. I I used to hang out on those Teen Titans forums a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it was really embarrassing in retrospect. Next I, I apologize, Nick. It was it was a warning for uh, Teen Titans Go. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't I didn't start getting into the internet, like truly getting into the internet until I was like uh fifteen, like when Simonic Titan came out. That was when I got into fandoms and shit, and that was the it, I I I fucked I thought game was an embarrassing piece of shit. <laughs> I uh I remember <gasps> well you, you you did the save Symbionic Titan page, right? Or you at least part of it. Yeah, I was a pretty big part of it. I we <laughs> funny story. Um, we decided, um, in order to spread awareness about a Titan, <laughs> we do a big group art role play with uh, where we acted out an episode that we all wrote together on one of Cartoon Network's um, Facebook posts. Twenty minutes later. Yeah, no, I remember we we uploaded the episode. Boring. And she, uh, no, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we're having we're reminiscing. <laughs> no, anyway. So, uh, I just want to say, if, if Pan can have the, that sister's keeper discussion, I think we can have this <laughs> You're one. You're talking about some random person we don't know in some forum no one cares <laughs> That's about. That's fair enough. You were talking about a movie hey, hey, book thing that no this, one cared about. This is a movie about incest and bondage and porno, and you're all talking about your nerdy fucking... That's a Tuesday, <laughs> a damn it. Yeah. He's got a point. That's boring. <laughs> but other news, <laughs> unless you have anything else to say about gay theory? No, I think we're good. No, I just thought it was hilarious. That's yeah. all. It was just like one of those things where he's like, I, I, it's just the fact that he's like, I don't believe in these theories. I think th- I think they're stupid theories too. Stop making fun of me for wasting your time. Like, <laughs> okay. I mean, he didn't say it, but that's what he said. This oh, is like man. the highest level like YouTube breakdown I've ever seen. Like, what a ball from grace. 
Yeah. Uh, this reminds me of um, when Mr. Enter um, made a video on this, I think it was called Rocket Monkeys or something, uh, mm-hmm. where basically like he spent the whole video saying, look, guys, I'm tired of you all giving me uh, requests. I don't do requests. I'm tired of you all giving me requests. I have to work in my own time. Please stop requesting things to me. <laughs> like he spends two thirds of this video talking about requests and stuff. And like the the second third, uh, the, the third third, he's. He says, okay, but just just to please you all, I'm going to review this episode. So thanks. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> and the ironic thing is in this episode, like, there's a character that complains, a character that within the, this cartoon saying, Rocket Monkeys, I'm getting I'm getting swamped with emails. Please help. And then uh, Mr. Renner says, oh, that's the worst thing that could ever happen to you. Sarcastically, <laughs> just like, you went on a fucking t- rant for two thirds of this video. When are we going to have Mr. Enter on the podcast? Let's bring him in! This is, a, this is a reoccurring thing that I notice you guys do. And <laughs> I don't oh. think it's ever going to happen. Oh, no, no. I feel like because like, if people are playing at home, the Rebel Taxi bingo set, I'm pretty sure someone's got the connect for. Because oh, yeah. so, in the same it's sentence, not, we made fun of it's Matt not Pat bingo. It's, fucking, it's a drinking game. It's a fucking drinking game. How else are you going to put up with these shitty episodes? As, as if our <laughs> fans are old enough to drink, honk, honk. Don't no, don't say that you fucking weirdo! God damn it! Uh, but now uh, uh, my point about the Matt Pat thing is just like it. Matt Pat's actually kind of really easy to kind of hate on because of how like uh, it, before we didn't know that his ego was fragile. We just knew that he was getting one because you know he's gotten a lot of really awesome opportunities over the years. Yeah. You know he met the fucking Pope <laughs> and gave him Undertale. <laughs> Because he makes dumb videos on the internet. Well, they're actually th- some of the smarter, well-written videos. The earlier ones. I, I miss, I really miss old school game theory where it wasn't like clip baity titles and stuff based around that. Like I, like Adventure Island, finding out where the fuck Adventure Island is based off the fruits on the island. That is a, such a cool fucking niche thing to do. But, it, you know, it's like only nerds will like it, like myself. But like it was yeah, cool. Yeah. Because, like, the thing was with, like, older game theory, the, the thing that got me, like, when it first came out was, like, it was, like, uh, it was dumbass stuff. Like, oh, you know, it was Sonic actually faster than Mario, but then he actually uses, you know, like, actual facts and points to, like, say technically, yeah, it is. But now it's like, oh, uh, is Sans secretly Freddy Fazbear? And it's, like, right. it's, it's even more niche than it was before. Where well, he it, knows it, what games are going to get him views, so he just talks about the same games, like on a cycle now and it's not oh. even no oh, believe me i'm not i'm not defending matt pat believe me but, I, mean, oh, I know like, you're not i'm just saying that he, he has a does, he has a formula now he still does occasional cool video like uh would Mar- how high does mario jump like that's yeah. legitimately cool that's something that i i can get behind on because that's still you know like taking something from a game theorizing it and making it cool versus like a lot of the other stuff's more narrative and more just like oh here's this wacky thing i could put into this that, that you know people are gonna be like this is fucking stupid he, in the comments did, he did a video i don't know if it was about star fox or something like that when he's talking it's either star fox or street fighter where he got into like a plane or something and i'm like this is such clearly, a waste it's definitely star fox gary yeah he was yeah no, i don't no, know why street fighter was, clearly street fighter <laughs> no i don't know why i thought it was street fighter i think i'm thinking oh yeah i just watched those two videos back to back that's why i thought they're confusing but Did you like, like the game theory where uh matt pat rode on a bicycle talking about mortal kombat <laughs> <laughs> No, my whole point is that like these bigger, more like extravagant game theories he does are like such a waste of resources. <laughs> like just it's so simple to make like a like a five to ten minute video about like just a game, a theory you have about it and explain that theory. Then like I got to get in a jet to see if Star Fox is accurate. And it's like it's it's a waste of everybody's time. Eh, well, so, so, you're misremembering that because what happened was he made a joke. Originally, he did that video. And he didn't have the resources of funds to do that. He made a joke. He's like, this would be a, a Mythbuster style show where I'd be in a plane. And then um, he later got some sponsorship money. And he's like, it it aired on someone else's channel. Oh, it was, it was a okay. cross platform thing where he's like, he referenced the fact that he, he made that reference. And then it finally, uh, usually how these deals work with YouTube videos, if you collaborate with them after like a year or two, they allow you to re-upload the video on your own channel. Okay. Got it. Mm-hmm. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> uh, it's, hey, it's totally cool. But uh, hey, that's just a theory. <laughs> I'm gay for the theory, Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs>
You're going to drive that home movies reference into the ground, aren't you? <laughs> Look, I always say Hong Kong, get on the mic every single time I say a, say some terrible jokes, okay? <laughs> oh, oh, either so Hong like, Kong or Hot Dog. Oh, Hot Dog. Yeah, I thought it was, oh, Hot Dog was your thing, I, not Hong Kong. Look, well, we can have two. I can have more than one wacky slogan. Like, if this was a sitcom, I can have more than one. It, it, it uh, helps the sitcom, you know... There's more mileage out of it, you know? Yeah, a character's nothing without a catchphrase. Wubba dub dub dub, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So so I noticed in class, I now use, um, I, I used, what was it? Uh, there was something I got called out for. Someone like, like said it was really cringy mm. for me to say, beat, uh, bada bing, bada boom. Hey, I'm which is something here. that I. Yeah, yeah. Like I thought it was like an actual like thing that people say. And then apparently it was like, oh man, every time, at the time, Steph, every time Steph says that, ah, oh, it's so cringy. And now I do it like in my fucking class. <laughs> like they shit. thought bada bing bada boom was cringy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm walking here. <laughs> I'm king of the bees. Okay. On the next all new Samurai Jack. Is there something wrong? The music. The samurai goes undercover to infiltrate a raid of destruction. Children of Aku. Samurai Jack is in the house and meets an opponent with martial arts skills to match his own. It's a fight for the ages against the dreaded DJ Salvatore. It's Jack and the Raid on the next Samurai Jack. For the next bit of news, Samurai Jack is coming out March 11th. The new uh, final series. The final uh, 10 episodes, I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jack um, released a teaser where um, Jack was riding a motorcycle and it looked really good. And they show actual... Except fucking... the arm he wears looks fucking stupid Whoa. and he was talking about mortal Kombat. what <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. that was a bi bicycle jack yeah it's coming out march 11th and people are asking like do you have little faith in the samurai jack uh revival after powerpuff girls came out and the answer is no since uh if samurai jack was coming out on cartoon network i'd be worried but it's going on adult swim if it was on Cartoon Network, like, I'd be worried if they were trying to sell, like, toys or something along with it. But with Adult Swim, it feels like they just want to complete the story, finish it, end the series, and g get it done. So, well, yeah. Well, that's, that's the problem with, like, a lot of fans right now is they just jump to these weird conclusions. Because, mm -hmm. like, if you look at it, okay, so on the very, like, broadest stroke possible, it's the exact same story. It's um, a TV show that was previously aired, being re rebooted, or being brought back to a new generation. Mm -hmm. Um, the difference, though, is that like Samurai Jack has like the entire original staff, like including one of the original artists that did like the backgrounds back, and you know the and they're they're clearly doing this as like a passion project to like finish what they started versus Powerpuff Girls, which is kind of you know it feels very much like a cash grab. It's just like hey, let's bring back this successful property that could sell toys. And that's why I have more faith in this than Powerpuff Girls. Oh, yeah. Plus, Gendy is an executive producer, whereas the other reboots are, have minimal involvement from the creators. Yeah, I'll give them that. The fact that, you know, he came back to do it is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, he's the one who wanted it back. Like he called up Car. I don't, he's been trying to get it, trying to get it made into a movie. But then eventually he just emailed someone at Adult Swim, I think Mike Lazo, and just said, hey, uh, can I uh, bring back Samurai Jack? Sure. Okay. And that's how this <laughs> happened. Just a simple email. Have you guys seen the pictures for the last day of shooting or like a recording for Samurai Jack? Oh, no. I think where they have the cake and all that. Oh, yeah. yeah that, that's the only thing I want to fucking talk about is the goddamn cake. So oh. they have a cake to celebrate the last day of shooting. And it's Samurai Jack in a waterfall naked. Yeah, his ass is exposed. Not his balls, <laughs> you know. And it's, uh, it's Jack's it's back. back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. Like, uh, out of all the fucking things they could do, that's what they decide. And I'm, I'm so happy for that. They paid a cake maker to make that. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it was a guy who really liked Samurai Jack. It was just like a giant coincidence. He's like, I get to make a Samurai Jack cake. And then they told him what it was. He was like, oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sign me up. Complain will make you draw him from the other side. Oh, <laughs> even better. <laughs> yeah, um, what I, I'm going to mention, I'm going to um, give the uh, people playing the drinking game another shot, but I hope if um, Samurai Jack is successful, they uh, go through months of paperwork to uh, undo the uh, Save Bionic Titan, uh, uh, like, uh, right off, and maybe one day we can we well, have that. Maybe in 10 years. Well, no, no, because, like, didn't uh, Symbiotic Titan get re-aired on uh, Adult Swim? 
Yeah, but they, they eventually they said. That was before it got written off. Yeah. Oh, okay. Are you sure? Yep. I, I, was it? Tanami I don't remember. announced how they written off that and also beware the Batman. Oh, yeah, beware, well, the, beware Batman. the Batman could just go away. That's fine. <laughs> no one cares I've about beware. I've mixed opinions about that show. Some people really like it and some people really hate it. It's average. Yeah. I, I, I think, uh, what was the one that came before? The Batman? No, was there really was good. A, there was. I, I, thought, I thought that one was kind of underrated. I mean, you're following in the footsteps of the animated series, and it's not really fair to compare. Yeah, what's? But like, I like the design. Some of the designs on that show, but See, uh, the designs is what turned me off from that show. It looks like I don't know. It I, looks I, like, I like Draco I, the Ninety Nine Dragons, the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah it kind of does. But I liked um, I liked the way the design Poison Ivy, where they gave her like her hair was like flowers. I thought that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but some of the designs did not work. I thought the Riddler one was really bad. Mm-hmm. I like the I, the one that's I think the most controversial for a lot of people. I really enjoyed was I like the Joker's design. Yeah, I hear a lot of people like that one. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, but at I, this point, no one can fucking complain about the Joker design because we have what that shit from the Suicide Squad. Yeah, I don't care everyone's anymore. Looking at the, everyone's <laughs> looking at the old one. They're like, oh man, those were the days. Yeah, it was a simpler <laughs> time. Ooh, but I kind of like the that gorilla start that gorilla looking um, Joker. Yeah, I, I I understood like the logic behind making him look like that. They wanted to make him like instead of like a kind of sophisticated character, like in a, in a suit and everything. They wanted to make him look like an insane brute, and I get that. But um, I mean, it's it's I'm in the middle on it. I, I think it's okay, mm-hmm. but it's not my favorite design. I think we can all agree our favorite design of the Joker is the uh, um, New Adventures of Batman and Robin one. Obviously. Which is that the one from the seventies? No, 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 the the nineties no, one that the looked one. like shit. The super simplified Joker. The second. Oh one. right! Oh right! 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 His right! Skin, right! His face the was one just with white. The, dot, the dot eyes. Yeah, his face was just white, and that was it. That's, yeah, he was the only character on the show with dot eyes. It's so weird. Oh. He looks like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> oh, You're gonna fucking shut up! Huh? I will say they had a much better design for the Scarecrow on that show. Hmm. Yeah. Like the, the, the one. Yeah, um, that one was really cool. I own the Batman, the animated series art book, and they talk about the Joker redesign briefly, and they're like, yeah, nobody liked it. <laughs> nobody was happy with it. No. I like There's that. something about, like, even... <clears throat> Go ahead, Nick, sorry. I like My Way Entertainment's interpretation of Batman. <laughs> who that? Maybe you should uh, t- tell everybody who My Way is, Nick. <laughs> it's uh, it's the guys that did the Juggernaut, bitch. Yeah, it's the Juggernaut, bitch! Oh... <laughs> <laughs> and they did Batman ones because they're still trying to write off the success. <laughs> nothing's better than nothing's better than the. Uh, what's, uh, no, no, that is the best. No, the X Men one. The X Men was amazing too. Yeah. I'm sorry, the uh, the one with Beast in in court, not Juggernaut bitch. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. But at least Juggernaut <laughs> b- bitch ended up in an actual X Men movie. The third one, but still, it that is there. that was the point where I think that's like one of those defining moments in like movie going for me. It's like. Wow, there can be really bad scripts sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> it just like woke me up. I was just like, oh, okay. This is one of those movies. Oh, on a side God, note, bitch. the Juggernaut <laughs> bitch thing actually like we it, that's a really old meme, right? Like it's at least yeah. a decade old. That's 2006, that's 2007, the, I think. That's, that's the granddaddy I, of memes, as they say. I kid you not, just literally this year we animated a juggernaut bitch, your mama joke. It's classic, <laughs> you know, it's it's classic. It's yeah. okay. No. Yeah, no. but look up um Nick Nick showed me like a lot of their other stuff uh my way and the the Batman one the uh the 60s Batman dubs they do are incredible. <laughs> they're pretty good. They're they're up there. With <laughs> that, I, think. I don't I don't want to spoil it but me and Nick quote uh the the penguin running for the mayor one a lot cuz Randy Hayes who did the juggernaut was um uh the penguin and he's just talking about he's trying to like defame Batman talking about how he's going to gay clubs. <laughs> Dicks. <laughs> but next bit of news, the Nintendo Switch comes out on my birthday. So, um, so if you would like to go onto my Amazon wish list and buy me something, please do. Is, is anyone excited? I'm kind of like waiting. I'm, I'm going to wait it out and see how it does before I buy it. Well, it's every console. Anyone that goes in, like the early adopters are usually the ones that are just kind of, you know, they're kind of guinea pigs. Granted, like, I would be more excited for the Switch if there was more titles. Like, yeah, they got the right titles out. You know, a Mario game, awesome. A Zelda game, cool. Um, but then, like, the, the rest of them are all just kind of like, they're not $60 games. Mm-hmm. But they're treating them like they're $60 games. Like, oh. one, two Switch should have came with the console. Yeah. So what you're, so it what looks you're like saying a right now. WarioWare game without the personality. Yeah. What were you saying, dude? 
whose dude? Uh, I'm just you, saying. So what you're telling me right now is that the Nintendo Switch isn't worth it. I guess oh, not. it's based off games? No, not really. Yeah. Um, I and I, I'm also a little pissed because like I backed a bunch of games for the Wii U, and like all of them are currently being canceled for the Switch version. And it's like I would have oh, been happy. Really? Like ukulele hollow knight people more people need to talk about hollow knight damn it mm-hmm. um it's a really cool 2d platformer game mm-hmm. uh, that's like hand-drawn it's super sweet yeah. i did like a let's play on my channel for it the only let's play i have on there mm-hmm. um but like all the games that i backed i was super excited to play on my wii u is gone and now like i don't know when i'm gonna be able to afford to get a switch especially right now when it's everything's really high and it's honestly not worth it yet Mm-hmm. Like I heard uh, the the one thing that kind of surprised me is um uh because you know everybody was freaking out saying like oh you're going to have to pay for online play when Nintendo like never really did that like ever. Um and then it was announced that it was only going to be like some like 20 bucks for a year, which isn't bad. So that's that's like a good bit of news I think. Yeah. I remember I was watching the video. I think I watched it like a day later after it had come out and I was just tweeting about it and like beat for beat like everything I posted Nick was like I agree. I agree. Which is really yeah, rare for me and Nick to agree on like everything. Everybody else was like, "Oh, you just don't get it." Oh, you didn't. Cause, like, I was no, like, you have to be skeptical. That's the thing. Like, I don't. It's. I feel like there's a like with Nintendo. Like everything they put out has this like ridiculous hype behind it. Gary, um, you just don't get it. Nintendo no. can do no wrong. I want. Here's the thing. I'm I so, want to. Go ahead. I'm really fucking sick of people. Who, who do have that mindset of, oh, it's Nintendo, it's okay when they do it, or, oh, yeah. it's Nintendo, they, they have the, like, when they, literally, when people were, when they released, like, a few good games for the Wii U, people were like, huh, they're good games, PS4 and Expo are done, right? <laughs> and it's just like... Yeah, because seriously, it's like, oh, Nintendo, they're coming out with new thing, new game, and it's like, they put out a console with nothing on it, five games, two of which are just remakes, and... Mm. Like the other three are like you have to wait for them. And can anybody tell me why it's called Super Mario Odyssey? <laughs> because you're going on an adventure. But you're going on an Odyssey. Mean? Do you not know what the word Odyssey is? Because yeah. it's actually know, a really clever title. I know the word Odyssey means like exploit, but it's like why would like okay okay Homer's okay. Odyssey? Literally, yeah. literally here. Okay, we had Super Mario World. Yeah. Then you have that weird title of Sunshine. Then you go from then once you go into space, where else do you fucking go? Galaxy. Yeah, we went galaxy. Where else do you go after that? God. God. <laughs> Super Mario. Super Mario God. God. Super Mario Awakening. I'm, I'm so, a like simulator all I'm game. Saying, all I'm saying is that Odyssey is a is a really bizarre name for it. Uh, and, nah. like, I mean, okay. I, I, there's, there's, I agree from a standpoint okay. that it okay. sounds a little too complicated. Like I don't think little kids be able to say it properly. I'm saying uh, with all the themes going on in the game, it's it's a little weird to call. Okay, Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, he goes on a vacation and he has to, you know, get the sunshine back. Super Mario Galaxy. He goes into space. Super Mario Odyssey. Oh, he's got an odd new partner, which is his hat, and he goes on adventures with it. I get that part. But the whole Bowser forced marriage thing, I feel like should be the most important part of it, I think. Why? Because I, mean, I agree that who, oh, all the stuff. I remember uh, what playing Mario for the story. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. But okay, okay. I, I agree that it's a little weird because normally Nintendo would name it after the hat gimmick. Mm-hmm. This would have, like, you know, Mario Sunshine was about to be on a tropical island. So this one, it should have been like, you know, hats off to Super Mario hats off or something. <laughs> uh, but like, uh, it's a, it's a, it's literally about him traveling to a different world, Earth ish, Earth really. with an asterisk. And then it's him going on a, a a world adventure, cross you know, like a he's traveling the whole world, yeah, different locations. This, this was a thing like when I was. I like, oh, so, I like that better. Super Mario head trip. <laughs> like That's that. actually kind of cool. I, I'm down with Nick on that one. I that like sounds that. pretty awesome. Or Super Mario mind trip or something. Uh, no, head trip works. It's at. And then and then I have to think too. Is it called the Odyssey because like you know it was about the dude and when he he's on that long journey and then he comes back to Ithaca he finds out that his wife remarried. Is that the Ooh, parallel? Oh shit! Yes. Are, are you the same guy talking shit about the title? And then yeah. you're over here like made a really good example why it should be called that. <laughs> I'm not saying it should be called that. I'm just saying it's a really weird thing to call it. I don't think this so. Is stupid! You're all idiots. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, talk but, like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I agree. Go ahead, sorry, Nolan. 
I just said um, Pan's one to talk because he can't clean his dick properly. Shut up! I, okay, I totally blanked that out. I heard that. I watched that whole video, and apparently, I just like it was it was traumatizing enough that I just mem- like just like blocked that whole story out. What the fuck's wrong with you, Pan? What what, what video? Which one? Uh, th- didn't you recently talk about this dick thing? Not on video. Oh, because like someone someone brought it, was it up. A Tumblr it was a Tumblr. Is it a Tumblr Rude. post? Rude. Yeah. What the fuck's wrong with Rude. Rude. You were probably the only YouTuber I know that actually legitimately made a post about his dick. Look. Well, Wait, well besides uh, Mike Matei. Pro Jared. Pro Jared. Pro Jared made a dick. What? Mike, I hate the internet. I'm so Mike over Jared it. talks about how much he likes Swita girls and how he liked dick. likes dicks. He talks about dicks and games. My, Mike Matei brags about his dick so much because he has nothing else to brag about. Mm. Hey, oh, yeah. oh, wait. Wait. Encyclopedia Dramatica page. All I totally forgot who that was. That's a, that's a angry video game nerd's friend. Little minion, right? Yeah, yeah. his minion. <laughs> that describes him. <laughs> his minion. He would almost become more pleasurable being a fucking minion. <laughs> yeah, but AVG just has him behind his sofa and just like doesn't let him out unless he has to make a crappy video. That's Kyle, that's Kyle, yeah. you idiot. Him too, yeah, he's, back, he's down there like scoring the videos, you know? He's gonna oh. take you back to the past. All I'm saying is it should be called Super Let's Mario. Let's whip out our dicks and shove them in ass. <laughs> Holy matrimony! Yay. Oh yeah, I, I really want to play a, a Mario game called Mario Holy Matrimony. Yeah, a game about marriage. She was okay. Like, okay. One last argument on that because I think this is actually really a stupid conversation. This but... is literally the dumbest argument we've ever had. Odyssey is a fine title for all. No, I, 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 I like see, here's the thing. Even if up. even if we all agree that Mario Odyssey is a good title, a lot of their other games don't have good titles. Like Arms could easily be called like Heavy Arms. Arms just and works. then yeah, no, I don't think Arms works at all. I think I, I think, think so that's either. boring, and people are gonna. I think the game will probably be really <sighs> fun to play it, but I like <laughs> like just anything. Like have just. I the think the character too. designs are severely lacking. It looks uh, people so- love those designs, though. Yeah. Like, have you not seen Tumblr? I think <laughs> I see a lot I've of things Tumblr on Tumblr that, that I don't want to see. I'm actually really, I really hope that they uh, do DLC where they have Monkey D. Luffy to play. <laughs> I hope they have DLC too, where you have to pay money to pay more to play more of it. <laughs> um the, the the one thing though that really upset me was that they didn't call Splatoon. Just Splatoon with two replacing me too, the T. Me too. Yeah, I was like, because it makes sense. It it reads the same exact way. Splatoon. Yeah, like it's perfect. Brand recognition. You know, you gotta have that Splatoon logo. Perfect. I know, but it's so. It's like it's the one instance where it would work. Like the fan, fat, the Fantastic Four thing where they tried to do it, and it just became Fan Four Stick or yeah. whatever. Classic. Or like Scraform or something like, it, <laughs> like it, like that stuff doesn't work. But like Splatoon works. Like yeah. that makes sense, and that's why it upset me. Because for the I'm one more time, it made the fact sense. they put out another Splatoon like so close to the original game coming out, we didn't need a sequel because nobody played the, the Wii U. <laughs> I mean, they're releasing need. a Mario Kart Eight Deluxe Edition on the yeah. Wii. Fuck that. So okay, uh, okay, okay. Honestly, so if they didn't release a Splatoon two. Uh, people would be really upset that they just re-released a bunch of games from the Wii U onto the Switch. But they did. It's called Splatoon 2 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The, well, I mean, they've changed a lot when Splatoon it comes to a uh, different Splatoon game. 2. Eh. But, um, I, I'm, you know, I think it's just going to... You could change haircuts, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but I That's think... what they should have done in the beginning, though. True, but now it. they finally did it. They, they hold it off because they're like, man, yeah, we need to buy the let's Switch. Let's put in the whole $60 game with, like, two more weapons. They can't do everything in the fucking first game. Holy shit, there's a lot of things they can do in a game, but... Yeah, I, 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 just like how the PS4 and PS and three, uh, the Xbox One have a bunch of re-releases from the previous generation. I feel like the the Switch is gonna have a bunch from the Wii U. Like we're gonna have um Mario Kart th- Mario 3D World Deluxe and stuff. Well, yeah, I, I I know for like okay, the one game that I think people really want to actually see port over from the Wii U to the Switch would have been a uh, updated version of Smash Brothers. Yeah. Add a couple of new characters to it, such as Ice Climbers. No, you know, hey, that that's a good enough reason to because it's not part of the, the the dual release of the Wii U and the 3DS version, and then no. you know combine the best elements between those two into it. And I think a lot of people could justify that being. I don't know if I could say it's a sixty dollar purchase, which they probably will release it as that. But I guess that's my biggest problem with the Switch right now is that all the games, aside from like Zelda, are like re-releases or really shitty like download games that are being yeah. pumped out at sixty bucks. Who's ready for Skyrim on the Switch? 
Dude, I'm so excited I could play Binding of Isaac on the Nintendo Switch. Yay. I, I have to say, I'm it's it's getting to that point where I'm really tired of just the main like three franchises constantly being repeated. And I feel like I should have felt like that a while ago. Yeah. But like this is the one where it just like finally oh. exhausted me. Oh. And I'm glad to see that they are kind of doing new franchises with arms and stuff like that. But like Nintendo has all these really cool IPs they just don't go back to. Like Master I would love like a Master Blaster remake like on the Switch. That would be really cool. Like to to like command that like a uh, vehicle with the Switch controls. But that'll never happen. Um and like you could do like, a good Kid, Ic- uh, Kid Icarus game, but I just think after the was it on the 3DS after that one didn't do yeah. well, like they're never going to go back to it. So they have Did all these really cool franchises that? and they just don't want to touch them. I They'll just put them in Smash and be like, see, we care. And they I, don't care. I would like a Star Fox game that isn't shit. Yes, yeah, thank you. Go. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think if they do okay. do another Smash Brothers, like like at least very recently and not like a few years off, and it, and it's basically just like Smash Wii U or whatever. I mean, they they won't do it, but I think they should do it like at a fixed price if you already have the Wii U one. Because the thing is with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, so that has all the DLC characters in it and then like a few more like new additions. But I already spent like 20 bucks on the DLC for like the Wii U like add on. So I'm going to just have to pay for it all again. Yeah. yeah. I do think if there's like a way that like that, see, this would be a really good way for them to like work with GameStop where like you trade in a GameStop and get some of your like, you know, points money off of it. You know, I think that's fair. That, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a good one. Well, the Let's... last time Nintendo worked with GameStop, they released you know, Blade Chronicles for 60 bucks. So, yeah, well, so I don't think GameStop would. Be how much suspect. how much is arms going to be? Does anybody 60, know? Uh, it's either 50 or 60 bucks. Yeah. Ours like, is like, a really Bomberman? cool concept. I just, I really hope it lives up to that. I, like, I would have called it spring loaded. That's a cool, I like, I, I, like anything. Okay. Like to me, like arms, like I said, like arms is like too definitive, not definitive. It's just too basic. And people are going to forget the title. I agree. <laughs> yeah. It's well, too basic. You need, you need something to get people like amped for it. So like, it, like spring loaded. There you go. Yeah, awesome. Spring loaded is perfect. Pan Pan had a good idea yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or, 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 wow. I got yeah, Lord, happens occasionally. I would have called it Lord of the Springs. <laughs> Lord of the Springs. And we lost it. Yay. Okay. He had like a good idea and then had to like fuck it up. Uh, but like <laughs> if, if ARMS was released on the NES or Super Nintendo, I don't think anyone would have been bitching about the title. Mm-hmm. And I, I think the characters are really cool. I think uh, right now, the I don't think ARMS is the biggest issue. I think it's getting people, getting the Switch in their hand and getting people to actually try it. I, if um, this had been released for the Wii instead of um, like I, I really liked the uh, the Punch Out uh, remake they made. Yeah. But like, had they done? I mean, I guess you kind of for all the mechanics they want for for arms, like you need the uh, Switch stuff they added in. But like, I don't know. I feel like it would have done really well in the Wii. Okay, I have to say in the comments section, someone said Armageddon. Armageddon. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's really cool. good. That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> oh, I forgot we were streaming. <laughs> yeah, I did too. Yeah, we're um, streaming this uh, podcast. We didn't warn anyone. We did, I didn't know. No one knew. But, no one did it. But if you actually, if you look at the titles, besides the the, because you know the Nintendo ones range from being like cool to like great, but the, all the other titles that are out right now, there's like a Tetris game, and then there's like a Bomberman, and again, yeah. those just don't feel like sixty dollars games. And I think they, they were they they're, they're fifty. Could, or they should be bundled. It should be bundled in with the system. Yeah. I'll put, I don't, I'll put I don't know about this Bomberman. Or, or, put it this way. They don't. They don't Tetris. feel like console sellers. Right. Well, they don't even feel like filler. They feel like ten dollar like um the like download games like Binding of Isaac. No, B- Bomberman. More like Bummer Man. Oh, Binding of Isaac. Okay, for some reason I was thinking of Golden Sun or something. <laughs> you no. like here? Here's the thing. The best Bomberman game has been made. And it was for me. Like, you play with like some people. Like holy you shit! You will never be able to top that. So I don't know why they keep trying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could potentially top that these days, but like, could you imagine having like 16 people over your house playing like couch co-op with you? <laughs> so I mean, people just freaking so out and screaming to like, hook up their like four Sega they, Saturns together. To be fair, like when they when they put out like new consoles, you know, typically they don't really have like a lot of punch, you know, like fanboys will take a look and say like, oh, they have this game, they have this game. And I guess it's just, you know, it's more apparent with the Switch because, you know, the designs are like, there's a lot bigger of a variety of, you know, designs and games and stuff. They're not like all like, you know, like gray and brown games. 
and there was a lot of hype behind the switch. So this kind of thing has just happened before and it's happening again, but I feel like mm-hmm. it shouldn't anymore. I feel like you should go all out and then release it. Cause uh-huh. we've got like, we've got five games on the way and like a few of them are like a year away. Yeah. Um, uh, cause like, isn't, is Mario Kart even a launch title? Uh, for the Wii U? No. Yeah, no, no, for the Switch. Oh, for the Switch. Uh, n- n- I forget. No, I no, it's so. Spring. I know. I know that uh, the Zelda game's a launch title. Yeah, but then the Mario game's a a, a Christmas title. So like, because you know, there's all these other titles, but I think the main ones that people are, are like interested in is Mario, Zelda, Arms, Splatoon, Mario Kart, and Splatoon. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and like, I think only one of those is actual launch title. That's yeah, a problem. yeah, that's what blows. That's what really stinks about it. Yeah, yeah, but is that all for the switch? I guess so. Yeah, so I guess we can get into the questions. All right, all nice. right. Let's ask the chat. Uh, chat. Let me. See. All right, I'm ready to. Re- we're recording now. Okay. All right, we're gonna switch. All right, questions. If anybody has a question, uh, be sure to post them in the YouTube comments of this video, and be sure to start out with the word "question" so it's easier to find. And we're gonna read questions from the comments of the last podcast, and also the the the, ta- the this live chat. Nintendo Switch. Here's a, um, I got a good question. Um, what content creator did you used to like or respect? Can I go first? The opinions expressed in this podcast belong to those individuals and not me. Please don't blame me. Yes. Hot diggity um, demon. Oh. You don't what, like what he do? You know, it, it's honestly not even like for any kind of reason. He's just uh, on a personal level. He's just one of the dudes that like, I think is like a really like talented artist and he, and he puts out like a lot of good content. But I just kind of think, you know, personally, I just think he's kind of a shithead. <laughs> yeah i mean like i'm kind of in the same page where like i don't think i, I like i think he's well articulate or uh, ironic i can't fucking say that word but like you know he's smart well written he speaks well um and then like he he's really talented like he's one of the only like internet animators that like he's beyond anyone else as far as like craft goes is like how each frame is really super detailed yeah. like he he is the uh efficiently he's probably one of the better animators while you know you have happy harry who's like does all the frames yeah. Where a lot of people like it because he's traditional. Uh, yeah. As far as like you know, modern animation, Tadigi Demons is it. But I do agree that some of his humor and some of his like views, like the Quentin Tarantino video, is like uh, probably not cool to post in this day and age. Like what I kind of think about him is like, yeah, like I agree with all that stuff. Like I do really think he's a talented animator and all that. But like the thing is, he's got this kind of like, oh, I'm better than all of you mentality. But like he plays it as like it's a joke. But I feel like it's not even a joke. It's played way too seriously to the point where it's like, oh, yeah, I'm kidding. But I'm really not kidding. That's what that's the only thing I, I don't really dig about him. You don't dig this demon. I for I think I think me and like when me and Nick started talking and hanging out, he had done that like brony con video. And that was automatically what like made me kind of not like him. But to be completely fair, like he doesn't do that type of humor anymore where he's just like an asshole to everybody. Like now oh, it's of course. No, but it's no, it's, it's just done differently. And I still don't particularly care for it. But that was the video where it was just like, you know, these people came out to see you, you could at least like treat them respectfully. And it's it, it just turned into like insanity. No, I mean, that's kind of his gimmick. People, I, I don't think people went there expecting for him to like, you know. I, yeah, I guess. I guess. It just, as as somebody who was viewing from like, just like an outside perspective, I would people really want this. But if you're saying that they were prepared, then. I mean, I mean I, I guess. Uh, when you make your videos are so like in your face, attack everyone, take no punches, you know, like it, it, he literally attacks everyone across the spectrum. Mm-hmm. You're gonna go there and think he's gonna be like, "Oh yeah, you're my new best friend." No, no, I didn't think that, but it was just I don't. Know, it, yeah. I, I get you. I mean, there, there's like a same level of like you know when Pan the other day, like a couple of podcasts ago, insulted his fans as a joke, and some of them took it seriously. Like I could see where um, some people might not be in with the joke. Here, here's an example. Like I, I really, really loved used to love Sleepy Cast, and I, I still do like a lot of those people. I love. But like, you know, they're really in your face and aggressive and like really just no filter. But I went to an animators panel at MAGFest and they just were normal guys. Like they weren't like 
assholes. And I, don't, I know it was an act. Like, I'm not I'm not saying like that hot diggity demon wasn't aware of what he was doing or like he was doing it yeah, maliciously what you're looking for is humble. Yeah, exactly. There you go. I guess that's kind of like how I am with like uh, Matt Pat. Like he's one that like I was really into his channel in the heyday of it, like in the very beginning. But since now, I feel like it's mostly run on his ego. Like mm-hmm. it's it's you know he he is a theatric person. You know, like uh, I think if he could choose uh, being a YouTuber versus being like an actor, he would jump on actor. He would jump on. Yeah, and he's not, you know. Which, by the way, everyone in the comments thinks uh, Gary is Trailer Drake. <laughs> Trailer Drake. And why, okay, so sometimes I'm uh, Mike Matei, sometimes I'm Jesse Eisenberg, and now I'm Trailer Drake. Oh, do, do your Mike Matei impression. <laughs> my Mike Matei impression? Yeah. Hey, guys, I'm Mike Matei. Whoa. Oh, my God, guys, it's Mike Matei on the podcast. Show us your dick, Mike Matei. Gary, the funniest I'm gonna tell you about. I'm going to tell you about Elmo's uh, adventure. And then get get heat for it. I don't know what was that all about. Like he did like a Sesame Sesame Street video. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was like the moment everybody decided they hated Mike Mate. Oh, <laughs> well, it's kind of ironic that um, angry video game nerd makes videos about like hating on these video games. And then the moment someone hates Mike Mate, he's like, "No, delete this. No one must know my shame." <laughs> I don't know who is Trailer Drake. Can, can somebody tell me who Trailer okay. Drake is? Uh, Trailer Drake used to be on Game Theory, ironically. Um, he used to do the Smash history. He now does comic book history. Like oh. he he talks about stuff. And you, I, like, I'm Skype friends with the dude, and you do sound a lot like him oh, now no. that it's been like told. Yeah, yeah. Like we could pass you off as him. So next time you're on the podcast, you're Trailer Drake. <laughs> All right. Next time we'll, we'll do it. Next podcast, so... we'll have Mike Matei on here. Wink, wink. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Mike Matei. Wow, it's so close. It's so close. It's, I just I pitch I pitch my voice up just ever so slightly, and then I'm Mike Matei. Yeah, yeah. Gary, please, please, before before we move on, please talk about Mr. Bucket as Mike Matei. <laughs> I don't I don't know enough about that. Fucking damn it, Mr. Bucket, more like Mr. Fuck it. I don't I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bucket, more like Mr. Fuck it. <laughs> so, so today's podcast, we have Mike Matei, we have Jim. <laughs> oh hey guys, uh, Emily! Yay! I I'm the, I can sort of do Kermit the Frog. And a faggot. Oh, and a faggot. <laughs> what the oh. fuck? I didn't do nothing. <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, stop angry. being mean to Stephanie. So, they did nothing wrong. Nolan, did you have any uh, YouTube celebrities that you liked and then just fell off the chart for you? Doug Walker. <laughs> uh, that is a pretty big one, I, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but I was told. I, I was told his. Uh, mother passed away so i feel like i should probably yeah lay off and yeah forth. that's let's not go down there I, i'm okay with uh du- sorry i dug okay i'm i'm fine with doug walker i don't know i guess i hate his brother more because like people are asking like why do you hate his brother well it's the business I, I, side i'm the inverse i'm the inverse i kind of enjoy rob but i don't uh, let me explain the thing what, what happened is essentially i forget just a bunch of screwy things happen behind the scenes at uh the channel awesome people were just fired from the website for some reason well, i forget why um oh Okay. So was fired because he was away from her computer for 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, hopefully I'll have a link to that story in the description. Hopefully. Basically, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of accounts that kind of like um, they all kind of band together, which you can kind of like logically you have to step back and be like, OK, so a bunch of these people got fired or quit from the same website. Um, so like th- you have to like take everything with a little bit of grain of salt because we don't know their tr- if their stories are true or if they're like you know overly dramatizing something for the sake of saving face and hurting someone that's hurt them. Uh, but for the most part, it sounds like across the board, everyone that used to work with Doug ha- has shown shady business habits. You know, like uh, for example, during the um, the anniversary movies, like they the, uh, he paid for their hotels, but he had to make a video. That was going to pay back the hotel. So everyone had to do crossovers during the um, during the anniversary movies, but they weren't I, getting they didn't get paid for those. I feel like if you framed that right, like ahead of time, it would be fine. But it sounds like something that was made up on the fly. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you told people like, hey, guys, this is the deal. This is how we're going to be paying for the like hotels this year. Like we're going to make all these videos and that'll pay for the hotels. But like. Yeah, it sounds kind of like they got to the hotels. It's like, by the way, you got to make all these videos. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's necessarily like a, a not fair deal, but it's just like, um, 
it's it just one of those shady or you know after the uh, you know it's really easy to paint the the, the walkers in a shady situation <laughs> when they have that fucking awful game show oh are they still doing that i don't know uh to recap for people who aren't familiar the walkers did a uh, crowdfunding or indiegogo or something for um oh, a, a yeah. game show <laughs> and then like it came out so long later and it's just really low quality and it's just like you compare it to other people who like have smaller shoestring budgets mm-hmm. and their their quality is so much lower. The microphones, the microphones are the worst thing in the world. Yeah. Like they're they're not even like a lapels, like lapel microphones. They use shotgun like mics. The, yeah, they use shotgun mics and they're oh, my God, the audio quality is so bad. You can yeah. hear like fans in the background, like not like fans cheering, like little <laughs> fans like going on in the background. Um <laughs> That was I don't know what the hell happened there. Uh, the, if you if you can link the pilot episode in the description, it is it is something. I'll, I'll try um, to find it, but yeah, let me. Because Brad, they got Brad Jones to host it, and I and that, in theory I like that idea a lot. I think Brad is can be really funny sometimes, but like he just did not want to be there from yeah. the looks of it. Cinema yeah. snob. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, like I, I could sort of do a cinema snob. I I, I tried and just well. fell there, but it's like. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if I have anyone that I would say like fell off for me. A lot of channel awesome for sure. Um, but I, I guess James, like, there, there was what James recently. Do to you? I watched, what? No, I like AVGN. I think he does still do quality content. But the Christmas video he did with a uh, Keith Apicary oh, was pretty no. bad. <laughs> Oh man, that was that was a hard set. I think it could work. And people were people were lauding him. They're like, "Oh, this is just like the Three Stooges." I'm like, "It's not though." <laughs> I mean, it's uh, not I, like okay. It, I, it it was bad. I, I think that that Christmas video with Keith Apicary, one of my favorite other inner personalities. I think it could have worked if like in between them showing these uh, weird peripherals, James would explain like normally what these things were and what's their history or what. Yeah, there's for. like a break, just a break. Yeah. But it just kept going. And and it, like if I had like any thoughts as to why that was the way it was, was because they were probably both busy doing stuff. Yeah. And they had to shoot it as fast as possible. Yeah, I guess but, what it feels like. Yeah, that was oh God, that was painful. Um and I think it sucks that he he's not gonna do Monster Madness anymore because that was like the one thing I still looked forward to every year because there were like movies that I really liked hmm. that would show up on those lists, and I'd be like, oh. That's cool. Yeah, he likes that movie. This is the most Gary thing there has ever been. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty up my alley. Yeah, but I like uh, that. W- what's weird about Monster Madness? Like they were talking about how they made it, and like uh, they were saying how they would wa- watch the movie on DVD, but they would record the movie <laughs> with a capture device, and it's like. You guys know how to rip DVDs, don't you? You don't have to watch the entire movie. You can just rip it. It's like, oh. I think the whole thing was that they were wa- they would watch it and then take notes while they were ripping no, no, no. it. No, like they. Was, hmm. I don't. Well, I don't know. But also, James was talking about how he he archives footage of video games. Like he has a whole binder full of CDs, and I'm like, wow, man, that's outdated. You you could just have a terabyte hard drive that contains all these movie files, but you have these DVDs that you gotta rip. From a big binder yeah, case. James, James seems like such a grandpa in terms of like how he <laughs> get with the times, old just, man. I can never, I, I could never hate James. I feel like, like I, I don't think I'll ever be like, oh, AV Jan is fucking horrible. <laughs> like, but yeah. I don't know. It, it's just, <laughs> I yeah, the the Keith Apicary thing really made me <laughs> wonder about like what kind of like quality control he has because that was that was bad. I, I, that I, was after really, really the bad. movie. The movie is where I kind of lost my faith in the. I still haven't seen the movie. I haven't. Well, I haven't either, but I've heard mixed things about it. I, I paid five dollars to see it, like rent it online, because I really I was excited about it. Because I like being a video game nerd. You know, he's like one of the for a lot of us. I think he's like the first like internet like producer that created content that we all jumped on. You know, he was he was one of the first. Yeah. yeah. So like, um, but you want to believe they can make it, and you know, you have these people that are re- quote unquote reviewers. And it's like, man, they're so knowledgeable about these movies. You know, they, they, they're going to have any plot holes. It's going to be perfect. Maybe the acting might be a little bad. And then it's just like, James really likes his practical effects. To the point to where like, he will allow the effect to be bad. Mm-hmm. He, he would prefer a shitty practical effect that takes you out of the movie before actually doing something like worthwhile. <laughs> He actually has a reason for why he does that, and I don't agree with it. I'm not saying I do, and, but the reason is that because he feels like it invites people into the movie and how to make the movie. So it very much, I guess, I guess his views on a movie 
the experience aren't so much as something that is supposed to engage the viewer into the world, but have them be wowed by movie magic. Well, like, I guess that's kind of his take on it is what I'm getting. He learned a lot of what he does from, and this is somebody who worked with this person. Like, this is coming from somebody who worked with him. Like, he learned a lot from, like, Lloyd Kaufman and Trauma. <laughs> And like, I, I love those guys. Like those guys are really, really smart about making movies and just making fun stuff. Um, I don't know if it just works for everything though. That's the problem. I think you have to have like, you have to set the right tone to do that kind of thing. And I, I don't know. I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know if James did that or not, but no, no, I understand it, where he's coming from. It made sense. There's just like movie. a point. There's a point where instead of like filming the, the V the van, like it, it might blow up. I'm not 100 percent sure. But there's a point where they, instead of filming the van in a desert area, he uses a, a like a Hot Wheels van, <laughs> and it's very obvious of what it is. And it's it it doesn't feel like it's framed as a joke. Like it, it's not like set up to where like uh, the, the camera angles in a dramatic side. I think it's I think it, the the van blows up. So I think it's supposed to be an action scene, and it's not Amer- like the the Team America thing. It's not like a joke. It's legitimately trying to play serious. And no one I know can like sit through there and be like, okay, that's legit. Like you, you, you're taken out, destroys yeah. any sense of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Tension. Immersion. Yeah, there you go. Immersion. Well, th- yeah. I mean, that's 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 the whole point. Then is that trauma does that really well, where you kind of know what you're getting into, establish this tone where everything's kind of like jokey and B movie ish. And I guess. I mean, the, the the one big complaint I heard about the Angry Video Game Nerd movie was that, like, it was this weird, like, him, like, like praising himself kind of movie where, like, he everybody was like, enamored with James and everybody thought he was this giant hero. And I feel like that's the wrong way to approach, like, an Angry Video Game Nerd movie. Like, mm-hmm. to me, the funniest thing would be, like, is if this guy thinks he's, like, really hot shit online and then he comes out into the real world and everybody just hates him and he has to prove himself that he's like really like cool. Like that would be a much more interesting yeah. narrative than to have everybody like, oh, we love angry video game nerd. And I think, I don't know, like he said he based it a lot on Wayne's world. And I can see that because like in Wayne's world, like, you know, they were kind of these minor celebrities, but that was such a small part of the movie. That was probably like a minute of the movie where people recognize Wayne and Garth and they're like, Oh, Wayne and Garth, Wayne's world. Cool. Like, it sounds like in the movie, like everybody, whenever he shows up, everyone's like, Oh man, the AVGN, you're so cool. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. That's, it just seems like a big, uh, it, it seems like it was a misfire. Yeah, well, I, I think the first thing that happens in the movie is just this like montage of how awesome the anger video game nerd is. Yeah, there you go. And, I don't then, feel like, it was that. I feel like it was just like a thank you to the fan sort of. It kind of, it was a little bit of both, you know, it's like, here's all these great achievements. Here's, you know, here's where I am. It felt a little like jerk offy, you know, just like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Because he never even like as much times as he's like done like self referential stuff. I I never really thought it was like that. He was like, so into it rather than it's just this thing that he did that he's also proud of and that he's happy that a lot of people like. But I, I again, I haven't seen the movie, so I, I, I wouldn't really know if, if it did. Can I just out. say one more thing, just on internet reviewers? Um, and like, I'm not trying to like, like, praise Pan for this. Say it to my fucking face. <laughs> no, it's, I, no, I think one of the smartest things Pan does is that he doesn't really make the reviews about himself, and like, Absolutely. he doesn't put himself on adventures. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like that's oh, like that's why Pan works, in my opinion, and like Linkara is rapidly losing his fan base. Oh. And and like why Doug? I mean I don't know what Doug's status is. I think people still watch Doug. He's but a guy like review on the internet. Yeah. Right. Um, Although I think um, after the movie, I feel like Angry Video Game Nerds videos have really improved. Like uh, the Bernstein Bears one, I really love. No, that was oh, yeah, that legitimately was funny. Like yeah. that was like legitimately funny. But like he he's the exception to the rule. I don't care when he does stuff like that because it just has more of a sense of humor to itself. But like. Linkara trying to make serious content where like linkara has got to save the world. And I'm like, I would never trust Linkara to save the world. That's like, um, it's, it's so weird. It's just no, so bizarre. The, I put um for Jim I, for his movie review vote. I put in a top of the fourth wall movie. Cause I'm really bitter. It lost the uh, review dare. I, yeah, I, I was upset about that too, because like, I, I think I could survive kick ass again. I don't know. If the top of the fourth wall. The movie is the biggest enigma I've ever seen in my life. Okay. So basically the way um, he frames the movie is that I'm um, like, they're still reviewers, but they also save the world on the side. And like, angry, <laughs> and like, 
I know it's so laughably <laughs> terrible, but when Kara plays it almost completely straight, like there, there are jokes, but it feels like the jokes are there to make it seem like it's taking itself lightheartedly, you know, like it's like, ah, ha, ha, we're having a fun time. But you can tell that when Kara's intention is that, oh, this is a completely serious sci-fi drama. And, and then there's a scene between him and Mars girl where he's breaking down and he literally insults the villains of the bad guy with the glasses movies and calls them lame. And he says, and he like says, I've had to face like actual villains and like people who want to kill me. <laughs> it's, he just takes himself so seriously. And there's this one, and the, then there's this line, they're like, Mars girl and the car are screaming at each other. And Mars girl's like, you froze. Like, because he uh, froze in a really important moment that would have killed them all. And then he just, like, tries to act, and he can't act. He is so bad at acting. Like, I've seen TV tropes, like, entries where they praise his acting. I just, like, what do you guys see that I don't? Uh, because fucking, he honestly just it hands it up, and he, like, and he takes himself so seriously, and there's, like, no leeway at all, and there, oh, my God, it's so uh, fucking... Uh, uh, this would be the last thing I say about that guy with the glasses, I promise, but, like... The, the reviewers I wanted to get popular never got popular. I, I really did like Paul Dugan's videos. I thought he was legitimately cool and humble and funny. And I like Chad Rocco. He's really cool. I love but, CR. Like, mm-hmm. uh, if we can get him on here. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. CR is really cool. Um, yeah, I love him. I want to talk with CR, yeah. yeah. So, um, let's see. If you get CR on, I'll de- I, I would love to come back on for that one. I did an interview with him. That's how uh, uh, Izzy found me. Oh, I did an interview. It? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that's I, right. Yeah, no, I, we... We were, I was going to do more of that podcast, but then I didn't. And then you were like, hey, do you want to – it's like I showed you failing upwards. Like, we could do this. And I was like, cool. And we did it. So okay. there you go. Gary, it's so weird because literally you have been in my life longer than, than I have originally thought. Like, you've just been everywhere in the fucking background, like some kind of weird, like, super villain. <laughs> like, you, you're a fan of Dom Farah's. You fucking were in the symb- same symbiotic Titan chat. You've literally been everywhere in my life for the past like six years, and I haven't fucking known about it. And it's honestly kind of creepy. Nolan, are you going to propose to him? Yeah. Huh? It really? sounds like you're going to propose to him. <laughs> it does. It does. You've been with me all my life. I just, I just want to say that he, I just wanted to say that like I've realized like Gary has been fucking everywhere. Like he knows my friend Sydney too. So yeah, I just yeah. It's fucking <laughs> weird. With Dom, the thing with Dom, though, is I was, yeah, I was a big fan of Dom Farah, and then he started going to my school. He went to NYU, and I just, I was playing Mega Man 8, I think, in the game room. Like, we have, like, a little and game room down there. He said, I'm a fire in my laser. Yeah, and then he said, I'm a fire in my laser, and then we became best friends. But he's like, <laughs> hey, what is this? I was like, it's Mega Man 8. He's like, cool. And, <laughs> and then we just walked away, and then I just friended him on Facebook. I'm like, hey, do you want to do a podcast? And then we became, like, pretty good friends after that. Mm-hmm. Lucky. So, yeah. But um, yeah. no, he's he Dom Dom is like like I don't know people people know Laser Collection and stuff like that, right? Um, Which uh, sucks so, because like, he's Dom well does all those, awesome. and he's a really talented filmmaker. Like he's he's really 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 good. He has a new short out called uh, called Hero. That's really mm-hmm. good. People should go watch that. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But um. Uh, I just want to say first, uh, any views expressed here are belong to those individuals and not me. So if anyone, if anybody, and we insults don't any... hate these people. We just, we just have issues with some of their contents. <laughs> to clarify, <laughs> Pan sends me everything I'm supposed to say on the podcast uh, oh. through text message. So all my views are directly Pan. No, <laughs> I'm not using these guys as like a, a puppet to uh, express my hatred, view, hatred and views and stuff. But, uh, and right now he's telling me to argue with it to make it seem more legit. No. Uh, <laughs> this is not part weird. of the plan, is he? This is not part of the I don't plan. This bit. I don't understand. Stick this to, is funny meta humor. <laughs> God, stick to the plan. <laughs> somebody, somebody just mentioned that Chad's stuff is all gameplay. It's really not. Chad just does a lot of live streams and archives. He's, he's recently. Like, he yeah, has a, yeah. Yeah, like that's like that only happened like a month ago. He just does that to like talk to the fans and stuff like Wait, that. Uh, Legitimately, yeah. CR is probably my biggest inspiration for wanting to do YouTube stuff. Because yeah. like he does, he does this really great series called uh, Familiar Faces, mm-hmm. where he takes like an obscure character from popular shows and dedicates like uh, ten to twenty minutes on like the history of that character and the, where they the, came from. Yeah, the uh, the video he did about Connie from Doug is really good. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> so uh, highly recommend that. He's got a really big backlog. He doesn't make as many videos, but uh, he, like I think he makes one like every like three to six months. Yeah, yeah. But um, 
going back to uh, Kick-Assia and those movies, like, um, I remember, like, occasionally you someone would complain about those movies and you'd always get a comment saying, well, they're supposed to be bad. I know somebody got Kick-Assia and then got a video by, um, Br who's that British re reviewer, um, cinema s snob? No, no, not him, um, who's that British reviewer? Film Brain. Film Brain. Yeah, so they got Film Brain's review on, like, one of those uh, epic movies, disaster movies, one of those uh, parody films that everybody hates. Like, they got his comments and they put it over kick and stuff, and it basically matched up with the same complaints. <laughs> he he really, he, is, he was when I felt the uh, site started going downhill. Oh. Like, Film Brain, was, it was Film Brain, like, early on. Yeah, early. Oh, God, uh, welcome to Bad Movie bite down oh he was the worst <laughs> i couldn't stand him mm. i and I, i'm sure he's like a nice guy i just i could not stand him i thought he like he he, he like he he's they like, paused on words for so long he would like elongate words to like to strengthen his point and that doesn't work it's just it's just really annoying um, speaking of uh speaking of youtube reviewers with uh thick accents have you guys heard of phantom strider uh i've been hearing about him more often but i in like negative context. Mm -mm. Oh man, oh. I haven't seen him, but I know he. I think he does cartoon videos, but I haven't seen them. He does cartoon videos, and they're 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 something to behold. Just because, like, I, like okay, it sounds like I'm making fun of him here, and I'm really not. Uh, well, maybe I am a little bit, but um, <laughs> it's it's not even that like, like him. So much of his so much as his like frames of reference are like really bizarre. Like, uh, just speaking factually, he doesn't really understand that like um. You know, he doesn't really understand, like, conflict and, like, plots. Like, uh, he won't really understand that, you know, like, say, for instance, like, Patrick Starr from Spongebob. He won't understand that his stupidity uh, often leads Spongebob and other characters, like, into trouble. He doesn't understand that that's a conflict and that he actually, like, considers Patrick Starr, like, a really, like, a bad character just because, like, he's, I guess, uh, inconsiderate towards Spongebob's feelings, Hey, so is this Mr. Enter? <laughs> no, this is not. This is fan of the sounds like Mr. Enter. Damn it! Yeah, they're they're basically one and the same. Yeah. Um I I really feel like it it sucks because like I feel like animation doesn't have a whole lot of like really good outlets in terms of critique. Um, and like the fact that Mr. Enter and Phantom Strider are like two of the biggest ones is like really upsetting to me. Like, there's no one out there who really comments on, like, why something works or why it doesn't. It's always, like, from the point of view of, like, a super bias, where it's like, I don't like how these characters treat this character. I don't, like, I don't like the morals in this story. What about me? And it's, yeah. it's like, uh, Speaking of Doug Walker, he was actually in Phantom Strider's most recent what video. What about me? Oh, What's he now? Yep. Yeah, no, Pam, we're talking about important people. Oh. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> asked if we would get Gary and Trailer Drake on the, tra on the podcast at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> the viewers exp the views expressed on this podcast are belong to those individuals not me <laughs> pan you know we all know you feel the same way i don't, don't know who and I, I hate enter i don't know who phantom strider is i never watched them um i i really feel like did jim sum it up really well where he was like watching like and like he got like really annoyed with him like within like five minutes was he the one who was talking about mr enter ah hmm I, I just thought, I, I thought whoever talked about that. So was much like, hatred that was like on this on. podcast. Is there any internet people you guys like besides me? Uh, no, uh, no, not you. I gotta say, Pan, if I could fanboy just for a second, honestly, I'm like, um, <laughs> no, no, like just saying, uh, the, the boom, boom sabotage thing was, I guess, kind of my first real taste of Pan. <laughs> um, and I thought it was a good, I thought it was a pretty like well put together video. It was I'll give funny. you a taste of Pan. And it was all thanks to me. Oh yeah. Nolan <laughs> donated the, the DVD. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. I like that one. And uh, honestly, I also really liked your, uh, one on, um, uh, the nut shack and how it wasn't like, you know, a complete farce. You actually talked about it. Yeah. And, uh, I had no idea that that dude, uh, did designs for. For Mon Nation Racers, because that's like one of my favorite PlayStation 3 games. Yeah, that guy, uh, Jesse Hernandez, he did like the video. And oh, oh cool. I, I should recently, mm -hmm. although I emailed him like s several months ago saying, hey, you want to be on the podcast? I should try emailing him again, see if the creator nice. of the Nutshack wants to be on. <laughs> <laughs> be well, he's, he's not really the creator. He's just co -creator. like the, the head, he's co creator. Yeah, he, um, it's, if yeah, there's anything to really blame for why that show is the way it is those fucking writers like jesus christ uh oh. real quick though did someone say that we didn't like people on the internet like was that was that like a statement said oh no but 
<laughs> we, 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 we just spend like the last 20 minutes d- dissing on every in- internet person yeah, we can think of. Please edit that no. down to where it's like not that bad. <laughs> but we oh, didn't. No, though. you said it. You fuck. I don't know what, what to cut no, down no, exactly. No, like, no, no, no. Thing. Like, I, I felt like I was, I was like way too hard on fucking uh, Hot Diggity Demon. Like, Nick <laughs> did it well, and I was like, I took it way too far. Okay, Gary's hey. comments will be deleted. Hot then. Diggity Demon is a faggot. Kill yourself. That's that's him. There you go. But I, but I also want to like say that we've also like gushed on CR for like ten yeah. minutes. So yeah. it's not like all negative for people. Okay. You guys, every who are internet saying person s- sucks except for CR. Yeah, yeah, I got someone please I like come up. on the podcast. Yeah, CR. <laughs> Didn't we want to do it? He'll totally do it. He's I really cool. Button jacket. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> like uh, I'm Skype friends with the dude. I can get him on here easy. Yeah. Um, but like honestly, I I think I just stopped watching YouTube videos. Aside from like, I occasionally watch Matt Pat stuff because I want to believe Game Theory can get good again. <laughs> I have both. And then like I watch Pan's Make stuff. Make Game Theory because... great again. <laughs> uh, I I still watch Red Letter Media a lot. Oh, yeah. I, I I'll always watch their Doesn't. stuff. Um, I thought I thought Although... they kind of they went a little overboard with the Star Wars stuff this December. I thought three videos like in a row was kind of crazy. But like I, I understood where they were coming from. Yeah, I'm like uh, I do. F- I do feel their uh, their um, jabbing at like nerd fandom stuff is kind of getting a little out of hand too. I but ah uh, no, I, here's the thing. I think the loot crate stuff is kind of funny. <laughs> I, the, I, the loot crate stuff was hilarious, but when they're like when they like make fun of people who like get excited about the title for the new Star Wars, like of course people are going to be excited about that. The Last Jedi is meant to be a title that invokes like mist like speculation and stuff and they're they're like oh if you if you want to speculate about it you're an idiot here's the thing i don't think they were saying that i think they were taking more jabs at like collider who makes like a career out of this and like the Mm, fact that they're exploiting like actual fandom and making it sound really dumb um like there was there was a collider video i think where they talked about how like oh red signifies how like dark it's gonna be and it's like (laughs) yeah i guess but like you don't need to make like a 20 minute video on just that one topic Thing. Yeah, kind of like I, I did. I did think like the nerd box stuff at the end of that video is funny, but uh, at the same time, I don't think there really needed to be more than one episode of um, what was it, nerd podcast? <laughs> yeah, it was funny. At, I, I, at that point, I was like, okay, Star Wars joke is getting old. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And I thought the, I'll be honest, I thought the Plinket response to the, uh, to the fans was kind of like cherry picked, and I, that was the way it was I, supposed to be. They're supposed to be making fun of like the really dumb fans, but like. Yeah. But I just felt like you didn't really need to make a response to comments. This is kind of yeah. a waste of time. I always think I always think response to comments videos are like bottom of the barrel and pretty yeah. much. But like, other than that, Red Letter Media is awesome. Yeah. I, I love. I will always watch their videos. I, I really, really like. Anytime Best of the Worst has a new episode, like it's a it's an event for me. Yeah. I love Hopefully that show. Channel episode just went up right now. Actually, oh, God. always uh, that's, that's my Super Bowl Sunday right there. <laughs> I like um I like Matthew Matosis uh because oh shit yes. There yeah, we go. Matthew Matosis is great uh, for a lot of reasons. The biggest one being that he actually sincerely talks about reviews and like does not inject humor into them at all and doesn't make them about himself like we were saying earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, in some of his earlier stuff, he makes jokes here and there. But if you want to watch him like lay into a game, I mean, break it down and destroy it for all it's worth. He did enjoy uh, The Last of Us and Bioshock Infinite. But if you really want re- if you really want to see those games exposed for what they actually are, look at Matthew Matosis because that that he's guy knows so shit. fucking good. Yeah, that, I'm gonna like, watch that Last of Us one. I've been meaning to forever, and I keep forgetting about him. This oh, guy so did weird. like uh, for those a big fan of Mario and um, Zelda, he went through and did like retrospectives on both of the 3D Mario and Zelda games, and like yeah. each one of those like an hour long video per game, and he just goes through every little bit and talks about how the mechanics work, how they tell the story. Um, he he give uh, I think the Abe's Odyssey one, the the Odd World one, is probably yeah. his best video personally. Uh, yeah, um, just because from a like a artist standpoint, he talks so much about game design through artwork. Uh, I they they can be kind of dry. I can see where people might like you know doze off a little bit because they are there is no humor. It's just straight up all knowledge. But for people who are legitimately like are intellectuals and want to like uh, learn about game design. Yeah. That is such a mandatory thing to watch. Absolutely. Um, I'm actually going to tie it back to animators for a second. I mean, not like the, just in, just in terms of the uh, now ugh, I'm getting tongue tied. Anyway, I'm going to tie it back to animators. Uh, there are two that I really like. Um, I really like Red Pilot Sun. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of him. He does like really bizarre kind of like surreal uh, animations. And they're kind of supposed to be 
I guess they're kind of supposed to be like shock videos in a way, but not really. There's kind of creepy videos, but like his music is some of the best electronic music I've ever heard. Um, so check him out. Uh, oh no, sorry, not Red Pilots. It's Pilot Red Sun is his name. And then Yukino Joe, I really like. Mm-hmm. I still think yeah. Yukino Joe puts out a lot of quality content. Yeah, uh, is great. The show, which is it's probably the coolest thing I've ever seen somebody <laughs> do for animators online, where he kind of gets. Great. Yeah, good. yeah, he's great. Yeah. Also, a super nice guy. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh yeah, but going back I, to how long have we been on this tangent? Yeah, but, but going, Dude, well, this is the first question. Yeah, we're yeah, still on yeah. the first question. But I just wanted to say, like, with Red Letter Media, like, I always, I'm always thinking that their fans are the type of people who are like, I'm cynical, so that means I'm deep type of crowd, you know? Yeah. The yeah, they do kind of attract that crowd. But... I, I I just want to tell everyone in the uh, comments and anyone that's listening to this, um, if you think you're a superior person because you don't enjoy an Adam Sandler movie. You ain't got nothing to brag about. Mm-hmm. Just, just putting it out there, you know. Like if you're, you're Nick, Nick you, wants to, uh, Nick wants to make a Billy Madison cartoon. Yeah, I bet he does. But let's, uh, <laughs> is, is this all for this topic? Yes. yes. All I right. Know. People really want to talk about John Tron. No, oh, no. We're done. We're <laughs> fucking done with like ten billion things. So fucking YouTubers. Ne- next time, some other time. Okay, but Full Metal Dub says, question: What do you think is more important in a YouTube video? Video. E- Video editing or audio editing? Okay, um, I can answer this since uh, I just want to say that, look, people will put up with like a three forty a th- a three sixty p review of something as long as you can hear it. Like if you can hear what the person is saying, you're fine. Audio is more important than video when it comes to video making because people are here to hear what you yeah, say. Yeah, but, but but to play devil's advocate, if your video literally looks like a potato, then kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's Have a standard. Yeah, but he's right. Someone will click off a video because the audio sounds awful and ear wrenching yeah. before any visual. <laughs> I agree. Uh, when when I went to school, like um, we the first day of uh, sound class, like the guy was like, "Listen, you can fix anything in your video in post. You cannot fix sound in post. Like <laughs> if you fuck up your sound, it's done. Like like you can kind of touch it up, but not really." Mm-hmm. So I agree. Uh, like, yes. I, I use the Dr. Katz rule of thumb where uh, you can watch Dr. Katz and you can look at it and it can still be funny. And you can also do something while it's playing on the background and it's still funny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like yesterday, I forget, I was looking for some early 2000s movie. I think it was Max Keeble's big move. And I just stumbled onto someone's review of it. And it just it was just a still image of the of uh, from the movie. And it's just some guy saying, <laughs> Hey guys, tell us a little bit about Fox Peebles. Sick move. A review if you'd like to subscribe. It's like that fucking, it's like that fucking Spaz Kid video where he's talking about Minecraft. He's oh. making fun of like Minecraft Let's Plays. Uh, and he's like, I gotta build a cobblestone generator. And then he's like, oh, the mic was in my throat. That must have been horrible. And that automatically just goes back to build a cobblestone generator. <laughs> so, fucking yeah. hate that. But the way I edit videos is, like, I edit the audio first, and, like, I don't yeah. edit any footage in. I edit the sound clips of the videos, of the thing I'm reviewing into it. So, mm-hmm. that if you wonder why my videos have such a flow to them, it's the, I edit the audio first. Yeah. It is it is flow. It does keep flow, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I enjoy when you take someone else's uh, remix and edit, and then just kind of, like, a little music video in there. Yeah, like a Toonami edit. Because, I, I don't know, for the longest time when I was barely starting out, I was thinking, like, huh, Toonami's pretty cool. I should have one of these music videos as a trailer. But then, like, mm-hmm. around the Star Fox and... Un- assault review a long ass time ago i thought hey why not just put this into the actual review itself like a toonami thing yeah so basically toonami and all these cowboy bebop stuff that i saw in beginning of college is influenced the videos yeah i i really dig those little like like like, uh indents you do like in in, like in between reviews where like you you know quasi cut to commercial break sort of yeah well he does if you if you don't turn off uh do you don't you add like a, a little commercial in there yeah yeah. I kind of I kind of hijacked that for the failing upward promo for all the artists yeah. where uh, well it's okay since it, I, I ripped off Cowboy Bebop how they had those in between things in, 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 right those eye catches that's what they're called yeah. eye catches and yeah. Trigun had that yeah my favorite is like yeah. you're watching Japanese One Piece uh, like the the subs and like the, you just see like the little eye catcher but then like McDonald's logo because it's sponsored by McDonald's it's like <laughs> what the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. If if you guys want to if you guys want to see like um sort of a similar aesthetic to pan and stuff like in like podcast form with like eye catches and uh aesthetic it's my friend does this co- podcast called the Fat Kookaburra and it's uh it it 
um, the first episode is about Cowboy Bebop and um, is really good. They're, they're still finding their feet, but uh, my, it's my friend Dan who is very, very good at chatting. And I would ask him to be on here, but his time zone is shit. So <laughs> Fat Kookaburra? In fucking Aussie land. So it's called the Fat Kookaburra. It's K-O-O-K-A. I'll, I'll look in the, uh, in the description since yeah, no one knows what that yeah. is. But but yeah, go check out this podcast. I'd appreciate it. I love you all. Just yeah. kidding. Haha. You'll all never right. know how I feel about you. Yeah. But uh, next question. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Alex Sullivan says, question. Since you live in the Valley, Pan, what are your thoughts on the goddamn radio voiceover, every commercial example, D-Tronics, House of China, Mail Enhancement? Also, any other radio voice that annoy the others? Okay, so basically in uh, where I live, the Rio Grande Valley, the most southern point of Texas, there's this one announcer for every single radio commercial. <laughs> and he's just everywhere. He's like our Krusty the Clown or something where he's just like the <laughs> one voice for every commercial. <laughs> It's like, come to D-Tronics for fire-breathing amplifiers and earth-shaking speakers. When it comes to window tint, nobody beats the pros at D-Tronics. That's because they use 3M window film. Besides keeping your car cooler and making your car look cooler, 3M film blocks 99.9% .9 of the harmful UV rays. I know the guy got arrested uh, a, a couple, of, like a year ago for um finding his his girlfriend's ex-boyfriend's car breaking into it and then filling it with shrimp i'm not sure why <laughs> what <the> true story <laughs> that's how i want to go out <laughs> yeah thank but, you for uh, thank you for giving us a question that we could all come chime in on but, but, but he's out of jail he he's, does this he does this all the time my, okay, my plan is to have a wayne's world situation where people in this hellhole called the valley <laughs> know who i am you know no, I, I think that's I, I like I, I kind of missed the idea of like public access and stuff like that. The Internet is that was a really cool now. concept. Yeah. Do they still have it? I think so. Yeah. Because like the FCC regulations say that you need to donate at least several hours of, of the day to public access somehow. Because because Mega 64 tried to get on public access before they had a uh, an Internet show. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, that's Los Angeles. Yeah. Everyone must have been trying to do that. I, all I know is that when I uh, in New York, like public access is very bizarre. Like most of it is just like religious propaganda, and it's really weird. <laughs> I want to see some of these things. Oh man, there's there are there are um, YouTube channels literally dedicated yeah. to collecting public access my, shows. My, my favorite is that one preacher that says, "Fuck your thoughts, I'm God," and <laughs> bitch you not. I don't remember. It might have been uh, blame it on uh, Jorge. Is that his name? Yeah. Yeah, he did a video. I think it was him. It was on like a like the top ten like creepiest public access shows. <laughs> um, and there was yeah, one. I did that. Yeah, there was one where like these people were like in ski masks, and it's really unsettling. <laughs> it's really bizarre. So look that up. That's oh that's really God. creepy. I got on Jorge's like top ten um, public access. That's yeah, a, yeah, that's I think that's what it's called. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like his stuff. He's cool. Yeah, he's a cool dude. Yeah, I like him, and uh, I like I like Bedhead Bernie's. Oh, oh, um, I'm gonna hype this up. Um, Bedhead Bernie recently revealed his voice, so do you guys know what that means? That always bothered me. I'm glad he finally did it. What does it mean, though? It means he's gonna be on the podcast soon. Yay. I've 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 name dropped him 50 million times on here. It's become part of the pizza party drinking game, but now he gets to be on. Yeah, I I told I well I didn't tell like tell him this, but I'm sure somebody else had mentioned it. But like people were looking for like that rocket power pilot that hadn't been like like it's, it hasn't been like commercially released, but it's like a five minute pilot, and it's all the footage you see in the intro that doesn't look like the rest of the show. Um, you can go yeah. watch that uh, at uh, um what's it called Pally Center from Lost Media or not Lost Media, just Pally Center for Media. Um, they have a bunch of cool stuff there, and I'm sure, like, if anyone's into lost media, you'll probably find a bunch of interesting stuff there. So, is this so, a, a real place? Yes, yes. Isn't uh, that in New York? So, people yeah. have to physically go yeah, we somewhere. About this, didn't we, Gary? Yeah, I, I think we did. People have to physically go somewhere just to see a goddamn rocket power pilot, and then you cannot record it. So, yes, you get to see it once, and that's it. We need a. Oh, I'm. That's fucking bullshit. We need to take them down. We need to. Get get that pilot and release it online, and then that, that'll that'll show them. 
You're making it sound like it's an animal. We need to take it back to the wild. It needs to be free. That pilot deserves to be seen by everyone. It does not deserve to be seen by anyone. Is it bad? I can see why they never. Okay, let me let me break it down really quick. I wrote I think I wrote the Lost Media wiki entry on it. But like so the pilot is from the point of view of Twister. Twister is the main character in the show. Um, And it's kind of like they tried to do a mixture of like the show and then like found footage stuff where it's like Twister recording their lives. And Sam is Latino in it. So that's something else they changed. Dios mio. And that's it. <laughs> it's, it's literally the pilot. So wh- where do we go again? Like, Welcome to Ocean Shores. Uh, when you, you said go it was going to be found footage, I thought, I thought you were going to say there's like snuff of like, like Twister <laughs> of, of looking Reggie. Of Reggie. <laughs> this time uh, you're going to get beefed, bro. Yeah, a lot of it is from the POV of Twister's camera. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I'm sorry if my mic is too loud. I apologize. But uh, where do people um, go to see this crap? You can... um. <laughs> You can you can go to the Pally Center, which is either in New York City or Los Angeles. The Pally um, Center, it's about the Pally Center for Media. It's P A L E Y. Okay, um, and you can go see. You can you can buy. I think it's like five dollars to get in, and you can you can just go up to their library and look through everything they have. They have a lot of pilots. They have um, like a lot of ep- complete seasons of shows. They have like a lot. Of, they have almost everything Jim Henson's ever made. Um, but like do they have any other like show. lost pilots? I, I didn't really look. We just me and my girlfriend were up there and we saw like rocket power pilot. Ah, that'll be funny. Like it's the crappy first episode where Sam shows up. We're watching. We started watching it and we're like, oh my god, this is this is like the the intro. Um, Damn. We, and so we got to yeah. break into the Pally Center and find that rocket power pilot. Yeah, uh, well, I, I don't endorse that. I no, don't endorse we, we don't endorse it, but if you can, go ahead. But, but not that we're endorsing it, but like if you, um, if you have the opportunity. I, I was talking with Jim because I planned on like meeting up with him eventually, and I always discuss doing that, but now we can't because Jim is dead from cancer. Hang on, you, you, you cut out also, all the, the way. views that of uh, pan pizza does not reflect the guests on the podcast. You, you I, cut out Nolan. Just going to say, I was plan. I, I talked to Jim about going to the center whenever where I visited him because I will do it eventually. And uh, I can't do that anymore because. Because what? Because, because what? You cut, out. <laughs> you cut out again. Oh, because Jim died of cancer. No, he didn't. Oh, no. Yeah, he did. uh, uh, his funeral was uh, yesterday. It was really sad. Wait, yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday, you said you call Sears. <laughs> Awful now. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> How long you been waiting to use that one? I don't know. I, I just when, when someone says yesterday, I think about that Sears commercial. <laughs> I'll call now. I cannot live another day without air conditioning. Says tomorrow's gonna be hotter. Hotter? Like yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday you said you'd call Sears. I'll call today. You call now. I'll call now. It was it was a pretty it was a pretty sad funeral though. Um, they however it was really kind. Uh, the, the people behind Monster Trucks did a live screening, yay, at, at, at his grave um, for one last time. Yay. Yeah, Creech was Creech was inconsolable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. I mean, and then and then uh, the producer of Monster Trucks came and said, "You can't. You got to stop mentioning Monster Trucks. We've already lost so much money because of you." <laughs> I yeah. still find and it really. Like, oh, sorry, dude. I still find it really funny that the best review I saw for that movie started with the phrase, listen, it's not Moonlight, but it is, it's good for what it is. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and I saw that. I saw it, too, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. But um, any other questions from the chat? A lot of people saw it, and they tagged us, and they were like, gotta get, gotta get our creature on. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why are you guys wasting your money? <laughs> the sad part <laughs> is, uh, like... The, ha, only half our podcast watched it because I haven't seen it yet either. Yeah. I, I saw it for I saw it for five bucks and uh, it was not worth those five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was well. I got exactly what I expected from this movie. I thought it was fun. The the, the first thing I thought when that movie started was um because they're in the construction yard. The first movie I thought of was the power. Um, because at, the, at the end of that movie, like all the parents are like in construction outfits. I'm like, this just looks like the ending of the Power Rangers movie to me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it kind of that movie kind of was the Power Rangers movie. It had bad CGI and really dumb dialogue, so it's pretty much the same. It felt like something that should have came out in 2002. 
Yeah, like something like maybe maybe like two thousand yeah, two thousand, two thousand two, something like, like that. Like if this did come out in two thousand two, there'd be like at least three Smash Mouth songs. It's it, it's a double feature you can watch with Clock Stoppers. Yeah, Clock Stoppers oh. in a Tim Allen's Zoom. I, I will defend Clock Stoppers on some levels because I think it's a kind of an interesting but the movie itself is really bad. Yeah, like it basically Clock Stoppers is pretty much trying to do that quicksilver scene in um X Men. Yeah. Except um, not as good, and in the 2000s when the technology just still wasn't there. It's all really bad jokes, like, oh, this guy has a DJ tournament, and, like, we have to make sure he DJs really well, so they <laughs> stop time, and then they cause him to, de- like, they just DJ his hands. I don't, it was really It doesn't weird. make any sense. They Like, they set up rules, and they don't follow their own rules that they set up. Like, they're basically having him DJ at supersonic speed, but he's going, like, sort of normal speed with uh so it's imp- i guess and then he's on his head it, it's such a fucking mess of a film it's a beautiful mess like the that only and cool snow thing day about that movie the only cool thing i remember about that movie was that like the the scientist who was doing it was like trapped in that room yeah and i thought that was kind of interesting like they had to keep him in that room so he wouldn't get out and like he was moving really fast yeah. Like, that was the only kind of cool concept they had in that movie. Wasn't it, was, it the kid's dad? He was aging also, like, at supersonic speed in real time and stuff. So that was an interesting, terrifying concept, but the movie's the garbage. Oh, God. And then and then the other scientist, like, de-ages to be, like, a fucking teenager. I, I remember that at the end. Yeah. Like, that's about it. I mean... And then I remember it had that Smash Mouth song in it. It was a holiday. I was thinking of, like, doing a top 10 Nickelodeon movies video, and I realized, wait a minute, are there even 10 good Nickelodeon theatrical movies? <laughs> There's, like, none. There's Rango, hey, hey, Spongebob, yeah, um... Oh, you know, I take it back. I lo- like, I like, I like Harriet the Spy. I was gonna say Harriet the Spy is pretty solid. Um, yeah. I don't know if this is a um, Nickelodeon movie, but Catch That Kid, remember that? I was watching that yesterday! <laughs> <laughs> it stars Kristen Stewart. I was thinking about that at work, like, yeah, Kristen Stewart was in it, and she, like, And gave Corbin a- Blue. Yeah, she gave him, she gave, okay, there's a big love triangle in this movie where Kristen Stewart has two guys that are interested in her, and they started fighting, and she's, to stop them from fighting, she pretends to like both of them, but on separate occasions, so she gives them these heart lockets that connect together with two people, and he, she gave them to both guys. If somebody saw, like, the two guys on the same day, and they were in the heart locket, they'd, oh shit, they're gay. Yeah. Cool. But, but to catch that kid is basically spy kids without a budget. No, it's Agent Cody Banks without a budget <laughs> uh, it's funny because nickelodeon movies and mtv mtv had the first mtv movie was joe's apartment which is like a big guilty pleasure of mine but like they also did dead men on campus mm-hmm. oh you know what i take it back mtv had a pretty a couple pretty good movies they did um orange county which is really good um, mm. uh, oh yeah Napo- well, that, what yeah napoleon dynamite was mtv movie tech- it was distributed by them i don't think they had any involvement really yeah oh. but it's all, all counted as a notch in their belt yeah. it's pretty good it's a pretty great movie Beavis and Butthead um, to America. Fuck, no, Nick's right. They actually, they have good movies. They have the exact opposite history of Nickelodeon movies. That, that movie where they st- steal the SAT answers. Um, oh, the perfect score. I yeah, like that movie. Which stars Scarlett Johansson and Chris Evans. Captain America and Scarlet Witch. I mean, it's not Scarlet and, Witch. And isn't, isn't the Asian guy from Disturbia in that movie too? This, I don't know. You never saw Disturbia? I like Disturbia. <laughs> you mean that overrated. ripoff of Hitchcock? Yeah, on a bus to Chicago. Yeah, I think it's. I think that movie has legitimately cool things about it. Shia LaBeouf is like, part. Yeah. I like. I like the concept of being like. I think it's in in a weird way. I think it's like more believable for like nobody to believe a kid, like that something's going on, than to believe an adult. So we kind. That, that's that's kind what of, small it soldiers created did. a little more tension. Small soldiers suck. Yeah, small soldiers did do that. Yeah. Small Soldiers is just gremlins with toys. With the same director. Yeah. Small Soldiers, big dicks. The director I really like, too. I love Joe Dante. Yeah. Okay, this went too far. Do we have, like, one more question? Yeah, any questions? (laughs) Go to the chat. Someone asked a question about Infinity Train. What about it? Uh, Yeah, we already had that podcast. Why do you think so many people want it? Mystery? Yeah. Next question. It looks like a jet genuinely good show yeah but uh we're gonna get this other show it's called uh magical summer camp or something oh i saw a preview to that earlier today okay i'm gonna link i'm gonna link an image a video of this the the clip they showed and when i saw it i honestly thought it was like a a cartoon like designed by some kid from the make-a-wish foundation or something (laughs) because 
it seriously looks like a child druid, which I guess that's the intent. But um, the way the eyes are... That is the most accurate representation. Does anyone have that image of Sonic plowing Tails from behind? That classic image in the early internet where Sonic is fucking Tails and Tails has this... Oh my god, fucking nostalgia way. Wave. Can, uh, I need to find that image and compare it to how they draw the eyes in uh, Summer Camp or whatever this is called. Whatever happened to um? Cupcake whatever Reed happened Bill? to uh, Twelve Forever? Are they not doing that anymore? I don't know. Uh, you know, honestly, if they released a, a pilot on the internet, it's a good chance that they might not be working on a series. Ouch! But they said they picked it up, didn't they? No, nope, I don't think I so. Know. There's no word. I mean, just think about it this way: so far, out of all the pilots they put on the internet. If the show didn't come out in the next like two months afterwards, well, Uncle uh, Grandpa, I don't know about that. I don't know about that oh, because the Loud House not... pilot was released like three years. Okay, I'm glad that uh, Loud House is part of Cartoon Network. Part of <laughs> Uncle I Grandpa, know, but I know. Steven I Universe, know, released, Clarence. They, Steven Universe released. Uh, they they released the pilot like uh, two months and then it started airing. But th- my so, point uh, is, Nickelodeon does something very similar where they group all the sh- together. It's not. Um, it's not set in stone. Yeah, I'm not I'm saying. I'm not saying it's set in stone. I'm just saying that like. There's a trend where they release a bunch of pilots on the internet and they don't all become series. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's just them releasing the stuff that didn't get picked up and just getting a little extra ad revenue and just kind of having, you know, filler content on their YouTube channel. Yeah. All I, I, I'm just saying, all I remember was that when, that when 12 Forever came out, there were a bunch of other pilots, but 12 Forever was the one that. I remember reading an article specifically saying that it had been picked up for series. I don't know, but um, I'm kind of worried about 12 Forever since um, it kind of – it looks like it can be very easily compared to Star vs. the Force of Evil. And Adventure Time. It's, it's more of Star vs. I, 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 I wrote a whole I, – I, I like Star a lot. Um. Uh, but I, I, I think it looks more like Adventure Time. Mm-hmm. I, I think, I think the terminology is very similar to Adventure. Just I think like all these the, fucking shows coming out look like Adventure Time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, all I'm saying is that most of the time they don't release the pilots of the series went full. You're gonna eat those words one day. You'll just wait. No, I, I'm not. And I'm, I mean, obviously, I'm not saying that's absolute. I'm not a fucking cis. Uh, <laughs> well, they did. They did. Um. What? What else was like? I mean, it doesn't really count. But um. What was the one? The OKKO? Yeah. They tried to do that as like a multimedia project where like yeah. it was a game. It was a show. Same with Magic Swords. Yeah, yeah. Magic. And, and to be fair, I'm I'm, I'm going to like as, as much as I like Kyle, I really would have preferred OKKO as the, the series. Yeah, got, like, a I cool completely series. agree with that. I think it has a little bit more potential. Yeah, um, it, there's there just feels like there's more character to it. And I know it's it would. St- I don't know if it would be like a serialized show, but. I think I would relate to the characters more in OKKO OK than every well, day I weep for riding with Burgess. <laughs> I, well, I think, I think, Get I think out. Mighty Magic Swords just feels more like little shorts than it. Like I like I they, I don't think they adapt it to the eleven minute thing very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they worked better when it was like three minutes per Nick, episode. Riding. Yeah, Nick has a whole thing about like riding with Burgess. Riding with Nick fucking really, Burgess. Nick really likes the concept, <laughs> but didn't like the execution. I yeah. hate that. Something about riding with Burgess just makes me feel gross. Like just Burgess himself just makes me feel disgusted. No, I I, oh, I oh. kind of side with you, Pam. He looks That's like he'd smell a pot. Like I'm not even kidding. Like he does look like a fucking pot user. I like it. God, fuck you, riding with Burgess. Like intro where he's moonwalking on the on the. It, 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 it looks like a podcast, not necessarily affected. <laughs> it looks like a fucking thing that would air on like Fox right next to Alan Gregory. <laughs> oh no, it is not that bad. Yeah, it does. And uh, he just has that stupid like, oh wow, we're the nineties. Oh, remember moonwalking? Oh, not really. I don't think so. Fuck you, Burgess. I certainly don't think it's as bad as Alan Gregory. Oh, and, and I like how Burgess is multicultural friends he, like he has this mexican guy who can only speak spanish dios mio burgess <laughs> that was really dumb nick you have to admit that was really <laughs> oh of course it was fucking stupid. he's like a pokemon but a mexican pokemon or something this is riding with burgess yeah yeah burgess I got all this stuff for free on the spaceship. Like I said, I like it in concept, execution, a little messy. Oh no, Burgess, no, they're gonna take my tacos away. That was that was released alongside um alongside a uh, uh, Twelve Forever <laughs> yeah. and uh, 
and uh, super jammers was it jammers 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 yeah jammers yeah we had the creator of jammers on here yeah she seemed really cool yeah. and i didn't like that short when it came but I, I listened to that podcast and Liz Hickey seemed like a pretty decent person. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, like knowing the creator does help like liking the project because it humanizes it. You oh, know? yeah, I, I did an entire article about like um, how showrunners have really kind of like brought like a, like animation to like a new fandom to me. Like if you think about uh, Gravity Falls, I feel like a lot of the appeal was Alex Hirsch being so involved with the fans. And the same thing goes for Rebecca Sugar. Like they, they just, they care about the fans and I feel like it makes the, the fan base feel more involved. Mm -hmm. So it, it helps for sure. Bart, just feel smooth. I've never seen Rebecca Sugar say anything at all about the fans. Yeah, I was going to say, was, she I, doesn't, I, don't, I don't, she doesn't post anything on Twitter or anything. No, 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 no. I'm just saying like, she'll, she'll go on Tumblr and she'll like release like demos of like the songs and stuff. Uh, yeah. But that's, that's completely different than say like yeah. Alex Hirsch. Yeah, that's just like, part for the course now. That's like expected of show well, that, creators. Yeah, really, but, yeah. but like, but like Alex Hirsch and her kind of like made that like a thing like that wasn't a thing before them no I, no I, fucking I teenage no, robot did no that way. in fucking 2004 do you have, uh, my life as a teenage robot they used to have this blog post i mean they used to have a blog spot where they post behind the scenes stuff oh and also what's funny about this blog spot um there was this one drawing of sheldon like really saucy drawings of sheldon with his shirt off and stuff and like it's just signed by rebecca and i'm just like this is this who i think it is who drew these <laughs> Like, uh, I, I, um, I, I think the person who really kicked that off before like Hirsch and Rebecca Sugar was Jonan Vasquez, like him interact, like finally embracing the fans after years, of not liking the show and then like going to the conventions. And yeah, he was really snarky, but that kind of like, I feel like him embracing that kind of opened the door for other like showrunners to do that. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But like Craig McCracken also had a demon art, uh, LT great yeah. creator. Yeah, Lauren Faust did it as well. Yeah, like uh, yeah, I'll so. oh, you know what, Lauren Faust was like one of the earlier ones too. I yeah. have to give her credit as well. I remember. No, no, no. It's a, it's the Steven Universe and a Gravity Falls are great at cartoons. They are they. Uh, the, the, the he didn't say that. Is come on. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah Teenage Robot started. started. Like, we, yep. That, that's like the new. This is like the new. Listen, game. okay. Listen. Every cartoon has two months to become a full series. All right. What. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Yo, smeal, uh, purchase. I didn't the... see every cartoon, you asshole. Oh, eat those... I literally said I don't speak in absolutes like that. I was just saying that, like, at, <laughs> out of the Cartoon Network ones, there's a trend that, like, most of the time, if they don't really, if they don't have like a cartoon like announced within like three months of the uh, pilot airing, it's most likely not happening because think about the production time. But they also had the cartoon. Institute, which was like that was like the regular show pilot aired like a year and a half before the actual show. Mm -hmm. But that, that's completely different than like oh the 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 YouTube stuff now. Those the, the cartoon suits they they aired those on yeah uh, on YouTube and then immediately took them off. They're actually just now re airing them on like officially on cartoon uh, on the the YouTube now. Uh, and it's a little bit different when you know all of a sudden all these videos popped up quote unquote leaked versus like official releases. I caramba, Burgess. Donald Trump is trying to take my tacos. <laughs> yeah, right with Burgess sucked. I liked it. I don't. I'm not <laughs> disagreeing. Statistically, that it someone has to like it. You know, you could just shit on a on the fucking floor, and someone would say, "Ooh, I would eat that." Listen, Burgess was not as bad as Alan Gregory. <laughs> I'm gonna kill Burgess. Like, I'm gonna fucking find that cartoon character. Do it, okay? Yeah. Fucking do it. Watch me. I'm gonna find Burgess somehow i hope you do yeah what i've learned what i've learned from working with nick is that he has very odd <laughs> peculiar tastes but he always has a reason like a very sound reason for liking these things tacos. it's not like nick just goes out there and he's like oh yeah right with burgess is an amazing pilot like he'll sit me down for like an hour and like go detail by detail about why it's actually decent. a contrarian they say burgess, your burgess let me mow your lawn oh no <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll 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 say Ryan with Burgess should come back and Pan should voice the the little <laughs> Yes, <laughs> just put me in there. That's yes. how you get into Cartoon Network, Pan. Get me the Pan will <laughs> get the cameo he's always wanted. Find me yeah. the white get the whitest Mexican me to voice this Mexican character. And he's and he's going to be wearing the rebel taxi hat in the show. Oh no. Well, what was the question <laughs> that got us into this? What were we talking about? Boss, I, I don't know, but Dicks. fuck Ryan with Burgess. <laughs> we stopped talking about it. <laughs> Holy shit, this took 
forever. <laughs> oh, we gotta yeah. get one more question. We okay. Screwing. Okay, a uh, gray Sabbath, the Galerith and Lost Society fan says, "Question: What's the worst movie you ever watched in theaters?" I was forced to watch Pixels, but no, wait, don't answer that. I think. Uh, let me rephrase this question since we already asked that a bunch of times. But um, what's the worst movie you were dragged to watching? Oh, mm. Maid of Honor. Zardoz. It was a Patrick. Dem- it was a Patrick Dempsey movie, and my I was I'm okay. I was bullied a lot as a kid, and no none of the boys in my class liked me at all. They all fucking hated me. So I would usually spend most of my days home alone, and uh. My sisters were hanging out with their friends and they were like, come on, let's come see this movie with us, Nolan. And I was like, okay. So I went with them to go see Maid of Honor and it was literally the worst fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. I hated it. <laughs> I remember uh, being dragged along with my uh, aunt and cousin to watch, um, I forget, what's that lady in the in the blind side? Um, Gravity, Speed, who's that lady? Uh, Sandra Bollocks. Yeah, oh, I call her Sandra go. Bollocks. But anyway, so it was this movie, I think, obs- something where she was a stalker and obsessed with this one guy. And she tr- oh. went across country just to find him and stalk him. and tell You him- saw that in theaters? Yeah. like the, the, oh. That's the worst feeling ever in the world when you're like dragged along to a movie you don't want to see. And it's like, you know, you have to sit there for 90 or two hours. Uh, for me... Um, I mean, the worst movie I've ever seen in theaters to this day is Rollerball. Uh oh. <laughs> Ro- Rollerball is a uh, is a remake of a 1970s movie that they tried to rebrand, and it's horrible. There is an entire 10 minutes of that movie, or maybe not 10, like five minutes, that takes place in night vision, mm-hmm. and there is no prior warning to going to night vision, and it just happens. And I thought the projector was broken. <laughs> uh, and there is a sound effect in that movie where uh, they break through a, gr- a gate. And it does the uh, like the boing sound. It goes boing boing boing. boing. Oh, <laughs> it's like you me really. That. <laughs> I, yeah, I showed you that, right? Oh god. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the worst one I was dragged to easily. Uh, my girlfriend took me to go see the Bling Ring, um, <laughs> and that was a Sofia Coppola movie that came out a couple years ago about like those kids who would in L.A. who would rob like celebrities' houses, and it is the most boring two hours I have ever sat in a movie theater ever. Wow. It, it is it is boring movie about horrible people, so it's not even entertaining. Like if it was about horrible people, I could understand that. I kind of like those movies sometimes, but it was just like they do like they try to make it as real as possible, where they talk in like they don't talk in usual like movie flow. They kind of have like a more grounded speak speech to their. You mean mumblecore? Yeah, it's sort of mumblecore, but not. I don't know, but it was just bad. Don't don't go see the bling ring. <laughs> it's, I, it's, I, it's it's bad. I got dragged to see Zardoz. What the hell is that? Zardoz. Zardoz is, is at is least bad. visually cool. The penis is bad. The gun is good. It's a it's a dystopian future movie in which Sean Connery runs around in a mankini, <gasps> killing and raping women. Oh, that uh, Sean Connery movie. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. I saw that in theaters. Thanks to my friend Jake. You got which, by the way, you guys delightfully t- said "fuck you, Jake." And Jake apparently listens to the podcast and got like, "No one's going to see that." That's st- oh my god, everyone hates me. What the oh. fuck? I didn't do anything to people. <laughs> like he was really upset about reading <laughs> the comments. They're only claiming in pain. the comments. Type, "Fuck you, Jake." No, 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 no more. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, according to the comments in the live stream, uh, Clarence aired eleven uh, months after its pilot. So. I will humbly say I was wrong with my yeah. stuff. It felt Suck like it. it. <laughs> wow, Pan. You're a sore winner. Sucks. <laughs> yeah. Nice story, you fucking yeah. idiot. I mean, oh, I gotta be careful, guys. I wanna like retaliate and make fun of Pan, but he tends to delete off podcasts. Shut the fuck do. up. Don't jinx this. That joke is so old. It's so 2000 and late. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. fine. But any other shitty oh, movies you're dragged wait, along wait, to? Wait. Yes, mine was um, "Don't Breathe." I thought that I heard that was a good movie. "Don't Breathe" is like the the okay. I should I got two. Uh, I'll brief them. Uh, the worst one I think was probably uh, it was between "Don't Breathe" and "Lights Out." "Lights Out" was like the perfect example of like modern horror and how shitty it is, and "Don't Breathe" is the perfect example of modern twists and how shitty they are. Uh, "Don't Breathe" was dumb. Um, it didn't really have like rules it had rules but then it broke them because 
Uh, no, that's it, that's Lights Out. I think you're thinking of. No, no, don't. I'm talking about Don't Breathe. They're both movies oh. about sitting in the dark. Oh wait, I thought. Yeah. I wait. Is Don't Breathe the one with the the robber old man who brings house? his own cum? Yes. People really want us to talk about the regular finale. That regular show's fucking dead. It's over. Yay. Seven years late. Oh. oh. That was like. Nah, that's too much to talk about. I don't feel like it, but yeah, it really was a great ending to like a series that changed my life. I'm not kidding though. It, I can. I guess you'll have to do the, the regular show review pan. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna die for this, but I I did not like that ending. You know what? Get out. <laughs> okay, can I can I at least have a second to explain myself? Go, why, why go, I didn't? Go for it. I want to hear. It's literally the last two care. minutes of the go show. I did not. The, the literal last two minutes of the show. I did not like. They come back to Earth, and that's cool. Like, I mean, that's always been event- the kind of mundane contrasted with, like, the surreal. Mm-hmm, um, yeah. And, like, that's fine. But then, like, they do this whole flash forward that's so completely unnecessary. And so, like, the fans are going to love this. It's, like, deeper lore. This felt like, it's like, here are all these characters that you'll never get to know, but you're going to have to care about them anyway because they're associated with all these other characters. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was really dumb. Like, to me, if you wanted to flash forward, Flash forward five years and then have it like, like have Eileen pregnant or something. Show them on the verge of change and not like, here's how much they've changed in the last like, like twenty years or something. It was just so forced and like, it was really kind of like cringy to be yeah, honest. That's rude. That seems pretty weak if they just force feed you that within like like the last few seconds of the show. Yeah, I I thought that was really um, I don't know, and it didn't leave like. The only part I liked about that was the very end where they said, oh, let's go play. That should have been the ending. Like, they kind of, like, five years. Do, you can do a flash forward. You could do five years later to show, like, subtle changes. But, like, they had all these characters. And this fucking random Batgirl OC character <laughs> that comes in and marries Mordecai. I thought that was really weird and very what? fan fiction-y. He moved on with oh, his life. No, it's, okay, and that's another thing. There were no endings for Margaret, and there were no endings for uh, CJ. And Whoa. I thought that was kind of fucked up. It is. That was kind of weird. She's a, she's a news reporter now. Who cares about her? She, but she, so you could show her in the future. She you moved could show on with CJ her life. The we don't see her again. That's what happens in life. You, people move on, and you never see them again, and they never talk to you, and they never answer your Facebook request. Fuck off. Cartoon <laughs> Network can do no wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I just thought it was very ham fisted. I'll ham fist you. <laughs> Ew. Oh, ham boating. G- I don't know. I I really wanted to like that finale, but then like then if you look at that final picture, they rushed those designs for the, I love for the how characters. True they were. <laughs> they were bad. I they love them. Bad. Um, I did. I kind of the only one that kind of made me laugh was were, were that some of Rigby's kids were taller than him and Eileen. I thought that was kind of funny. But, like, the, the Mordecai kids were like, you literally just went into Photoshop and just, like, put, like, bat ears on Mordecai. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, I didn't like it. Yeah. I didn't like that final that final two minutes really soured it for me, and it felt <laughs> well, like... I didn't give it enough of a shit to even check it out, so... Yeah, you stopped oh. watching regular show a while ago. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't that interested in show to begin with. I thought it was really formulaic and boring. <laughs> I, I just want to say, I, I can't wait till my Wikipedia page for uh, the Pizza Party podcast, because like right now, my trait on there is like hating everything. I can't wait for Nick to be on there, and then he could take my trait. Um, oh, yeah. I'll yeah, so that's that's actually going to be yeah. the relief, because I felt like when I came on the first time, I hated a couple of things, but I wasn't that bad. I remember yeah, one time we Skyped, and like every time I mentioned something, you were like, no, that shit's overrated. No, I hate that. What? Really? Yeah, you were like, hey, I brought, bring up Rick and Morty's like, oh no, that's overrated. Oh well, yeah, I don't, I don't. I brought up like Steven Universe. It's like, oh no, that's overrated. It's like everything to you was overrated. You were like Donald was Trump it? on fucking uh, Twitter. Well, I was you probably caught me on a really bad day. <laughs> yeah, but I'd like. I, the, I, I probably mean I. I was. I, I know. I just wanted a giant tangent. Yeah, but uh, I like the, um, okay, so for regular show ending, like, I didn't really care about the space arc, but I catched up with it for, like, whatever necessary episodes there were, and, like, by by the time it was over, like, I was, like, super satisfied when it was over, since the regular show was the reason I was doing, I'm doing these videos and want to work at Cartoon Network, because I saw that 2 in the AM, PM pilot, but, you know, how regular show started as that crudely animated short, and it just seemed so achievable to work at Cartoon Network, because that's basically those two shorts that J.C. Quintel did 
were what it took to go to Cartoon Network and he did other things, but those two just like influenced me and it's like, yeah, that's why I want to work at Cartoon Network. It was because of regular show. Yeah. Well, see, like you had a sentimental attachment to that show and I can understand why you, I mean, that's, and that's not, doesn't make like your opinion. I just personally, I, yeah, I didn't care for the ending, yeah. but I'm glad you got what you wanted. So, but is this the end of the podcast? I guess so. I'm fucking done. This has been, this has been quite, this ramped up, it started off very slow and then it ramped up to us yelling at each other. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm Pan Pizza. Who are you people? I'm Ola County. I'm no one. Uh, I'm Gary and uh, you should go to the Indiegogo for failing upward. Yeah. Help. And next video is going to be a Dougal. How to make their dreams a reality. Dougal. I'm Izzy. Izzy. And then goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Play us out, Emily and Stephanie. He's going to take you back to the past. To play the shitty games that suck ass, he'd rather have a buffalo. Take a diary and dump in his ear. He'd rather eat the rotten asshole. Of a roadkill skunk and drown it with, with beer. beer. He's the angriest gamer you ever heard. He's the angry Nintendo nerd. He's the angry Atari Sega nerd. He's the angry video game nerd.